All right, it's Thursday night. You know where you're at? I don't know. That's free form fucking beginning. Oh, it's the BS sessions, man. It's Thursday, oh. man. It's the BS sessions time. And with me, as always, is my esteemed fucking co-host, Jerry Supe, man. What's up, brother? Well, I wouldn't say esteemed, but how's it going, man? Oh, how about asshole? Esteemed asshole? Esteemed no, asshole. Not, not an esteemed asshole either. <laughs> A steamed asshole is the worst kind of smell. Just, a, just an old grumpy fucker, I guess. I don't know. But, a steamed gro- grumpy fucker. There you go. Yeah, grumpy there fucker. you go. Grumpy, not grubby fucker. I I, I bathe. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Anyway, we got a, We must have a decent topic tonight because we got a full fucking panel, man. Check this out, man. Uh, starting out, we'll start with the birthday boy tonight, Al Horta, man. How are you doing, dude? I'm doing great, man. Thank you very much for having me on. The Doors is one of my favorite bands, and this is right up my alley. So yeah. they were one of the first rock bands uh, as, a, as a kid, you know, growing up here. And because my older brother, man, he had all the albums. So so I'm glad to be on here, man. And uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. I yeah, happy it. birthday, man. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. And, uh, so and my, I saw, 50, I saw it. Fifty-two, uh, man. <laughs> I saw a fucking, I saw a fucking picture of you, man, where you're like all jacked and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is. yeah. The glory days. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're all jacked and shit. I hear because yeah, Edwin's. Now, oh, look at that, 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 man. Welcome dude, to the I, gun I, show. I, I, I was the Eric of the two thousands. Yeah. So, <laughs> so where, so where, when, she, when is your Man of War audition, man? Come on. Soon, man. Hey, I'm bigger than fucking Michelangelo Batio, man. Fuck. Oh, that guy's. I awesome. should be. I should wearing, be in fucking Man of War. And you're wearing Mark's favorite T-shirt. Wait, you want me to do it? Want me to do it? I know it's. All right, I feel bad for my neighbors, real quick, but uh. Fucking fuck slam! <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't if you don't know by now, you know it's my hockey brother, man. The only person I can really talk hockey to on here. Yeah, this. By Eric, the way, this. I'm sorry, I'm a, ca- I'm a casual playoff king fan. There you go. The Kings suck, Mark. But Fuck you. <laughs> we beat you this one is... year. Yeah, you got lucky, motherfucker. Fuck you. That was, that was a high stick, and you knew know it. Hey, but at no, least they this... at least they keep going to the playoffs. Just for that's playoff purgatory. You don't want to be in that position. But fucking, <laughs> just for the record, this episode is. Half top eleven door songs, half Panthers, Oilers, Game Three, Stanley Cup yeah. live stream. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Woo, so, yeah. Where's Twitch at? Twitch. Got much, anyway, got stream. we have a we have a new person now. We, we got Jaime Elos Fuertes here tonight, man. How you doing, Jaime? Hey, it's going all right, man. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for having me here tonight. I'm very excited. Um, like I was saying, of the doors, I, I got into them when I was. I guess in high school, and this was my favorite vine, my first vine I got from them. If y'all remember this compilation, yeah, yeah. I love I don't this compilation. That. I don't no, I had, I had the double CD one that I, I got from me Columbia. too. I had, I had the, the double, double CD, CD one with his shirt off, that's right? The, one yeah. I, yeah, the yeah. best, right. the best of the doors. Yeah, that's the one right. I first got. Yeah, right. I think, uh, I think this one came out first, and then they. That's an older one. Yeah, then yeah. the best yeah. of the doors was like an eighties. Compilation came out in the yeah age. yeah um because um, they wanted to rectify after just doing a single disc I mean what the hell were they thinking like for yeah. real you know yeah, that single disc it pretty much just hits the hits but that uh, the best of the doors that you're talking about is is so good yeah all right and then we got the guest who came up with this topic Travis Parada man how are you doing tonight man I'm doing quite well guys. Glad to be here. Glad to be talking about, in my opinion, the greatest American band of all time. Hey, I, I called your boss at Little Cheesers and I said, if you don't let him off, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something about you on the show. There you go. You're welcome. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm here. Glad I'm here. Yeah, well, me, me and Mark were talking today, and we're gonna. Well, the next the next one I'm gonna pick the topic, but after that, it's gonna be nothing but total guest picks. So get prepared, everybody. We decided that it kind of works better when we have guest picks. So. Because yeah, we we, we run out of ideas, we're we're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let the other fucking people worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll capitalize off it off their topics. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mark, all right, let's get this BS shit started, man. All right, man. I, I just got to start off because it's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He is the NBA logo, by the way. Yep. The great Jerry West died. He built most of Showtime <laughs> later. And he fucking brought Kobe and Shaq to the Lakers. And this guy was a masterpiece, master 
fucking general manager better than he was a player. You know, you, you got it. This guy was lived a tortured life. He lost three finals to the fucking Celtics by a combined point total of seven points. Oof. Three finals. They lost by seven points combined nose. And that guy that stuck with him his whole life, man, about losing to the Celtics, you know, and they finally got him in 72, you know, but they had to get Wilt Chamberlain there. Uh, so I, I, I love, I love Jerry West. He's a good guy. He's a fucking malcontent. He's a fucking, he's just, a, I think he's a legend. Do you guys have any thoughts on Jerry he, West? He, he is definitely Mr. Basketball in my opinion. I mean, uh, but he had, you have nine titles, I think. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, it wasn't my generation, but you know, st- history and stats don't lie. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think he probably is the. I, I think Jordan is probably the best player, but you know, Jerry West represented basketball. You know what I mean? Probably the most out of mm-hmm. everybody. So, condolences have, to the family, man. Yeah. Cool dude. Well, I yeah. said they should change the logo to Jordan, and uh, they can't do it to LeBron because it'd just be him falling oh, back. It would <laughs> be flopping, and that's my well, player. Be, I, I make well, fun of him. Uh, it would be a good representation of modern day basketball. <laughs> Sucks, Travis. You just put you put on the Slayer shirt, so you have to say it now too. You changed. <laughs> so it Travis, broke up, it broke up. It was so loud. Yeah. Yeah. So, was, uh, so, <laughs> let me let me go to Andy next. You have any yeah. thoughts on Jerry? Oh, that um, I Jerry's a cool guy. I'm just well, we know you're a cool guy. Yeah. Okay. But sorry. Um, I do know who he is. I don't watch basketball today. I don't watch basketball the past 10 years, but I know who Jerry West is. But I did not know that he was the man that's on the NBA logo. That is so cool. I've always that loved that cool. logo, and it should stay like that. It, it should, should stay like that. Yeah. He, you know, he yeah. has the most NBA Finals points of all time. Not LeBron, not Jordan. He has the most points oh, yeah. in the Finals, yeah. Yeah. That and that and he conquered – well, he pretty much brought basketball to the mainstream, pretty much, is what I would want to say. Him and Bill, because he played in the same days as Bill Bill Russell, right? Bill Russell, yeah, Celtics. Same time. <laughs> yeah, Bill yeah, Russell but beat him three sure times. At the same time. Okay. But, yeah, man, you um, – even though I don't watch basketball and I'm not a basketball fan, um, that was a big loss to the sports world. I'm just going to say this. I hope something – Hey, congratulations, Celtics. Fuck off. You're going to win. Yeah, I mean, unless, unless they totally fucking take a shit, yeah. they're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Celtics. Do you have any thoughts on Jerry West, Al? No, nah, man, just I echo what Andy said, man. And I, I dropped off on basketball like probably 15 years ago. I haven't really been into it uh, since like when I was younger. I was really into it when I was younger. But um, but that's, yeah, I didn't know he was the guy on the, the logo. That's Oh, That's wow. cool. I learned something every day on that, man. So, um, but yeah, rest in peace. How old was he, man? I didn't even know. 92, 90 something. 92. It yeah. was 80. Was in the 90s? Wow. I thought he was in the, I thought he was in the 90s. Man. I don't, he was only oh, it says 86. I wrote it down. Dumb. Oh, okay. It's 86. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still, he still lived a, still lived a pretty yeah. long life. Oh, so, the dude was still doing interviews for documentaries on basketball. Yeah. I, I watched them. I, and he was still oh. like a, Dude, you just remember, you know, he was a consultant for the Golden State Warriors before they became all those championships. He, wow. freaking, he even went to the Clippers and got them to the playoffs. <laughs> so they ain't <laughs> that, gonna that, 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 that was a hard order. I mean, yeah. that, really, they sucked. <laughs> oh, you know, Jerry West was. Dude had skills, man. Yeah, I had fucking skills. He knew basketball, man. He, any thoughts on that, Eric? I uh, mean, I don't really watch basketball. Rest in peace, though. But you like old basketball, like Kobe and Shaq and Magic Johnson, no? No. No, I hate well, then, basketball. Why the fuck you talk about Jordan all the time? Because <laughs> Jordan, cool, because I, I, Mark, I'm from Chicago. So. Oh, okay, but you're you're not a basketball fan. You shouldn't be talking about Jordan. You have no Jordan, thoughts. Well, no, 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 no. I have the yes. right to claim there. There, I have the right to claim that Jordan is the goat. Fuck LeBron James. You're LeBron not James a fucking is. basketball fan. You shouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> Well, even a non-basketball fan knows no. that Jordan is better than LeBron's bitch ass. Mark, I'm sorry, man. I love you, <laughs> but you I, only no, reason, I, I'm right. You're only, right on that. Jordan is better than LeBron. Well, I made fun the only of him. reason. The only reason you like LeBron so much because he plays for Lakers. You know damn well if he was not on your Lakers, he I would be I him. liked him since he came into the league. He was very exciting oh, to watch. Bullshit. I'm a basketball fan, man. Oh, I don't. There, it's not like 
fucking the Dodgers Giants, where I fucking hate every team but the Dodgers. You know, there's no rival for me. It's only the Celtics. That's why I'm pissed off that the Celtics are fucking gonna win another NBA. Oh. We were tied, damn it. We were tied. Fuck you, LeBron. Fuck you. You should have got that before the Celtics. All right, I'm pissed. That's what happens when you rely on LeBron. Well, they the uh, fucking GM didn't build a team around him, but uh, Travis. No, LeBron's the GM. That's the GM. That's the problem. LeBron doesn't let the GM or the coach do their damn job. LeBron. Yeah, oh, really. Yeah, really, dude. Mister. Give me the clipboard. Remember yeah. That? Heard that shit. He said that. Give me the clipboard. LeBron tells them what to do. It's ridiculous. All right. Well, I all right. Next. All right, Travis. You got I anything? told I don't think I'm tra- not going to argue with Mark about sports anymore. That's my big point. Hey. hey. I, I gave up on your, your team, dude, and you brought it up last time. I said your team is cool, and then, bam, I got hit. But, Travis, any thoughts on Jerry West? You know any basketball? Oh, yeah. I'm not a big basketball guy. <laughs> either, but rest in peace. And, um, I, well, I don't like much sports to begin with. So, All right. All right but, so- you know, rest in peace, you know, he, he is very important so, right. to the Lakers. And, well, see, I don't know much about basketball. Forget That's fine, man. We'll move on. We, I got yeah, some other yeah. shit to go. And we're then, moving on. I'm moving on. So I, I, I'm i going to get to something. I posted something and everybody's going, yeah, yeah, I want to be back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, I want to be back in the 70s. Yeah, no internet, nothing. And I put up a thing. I said, I call bullshit. No cars, no internet, no phones. You guys are bullshit. I call bullshit. He goes, no fuck. Cars. I fucking was in the 70s. And fucking, I love today's age. I love technology. I love how far we advance. Without technology, I wouldn't know you motherfuckers. <laughs> Just put it that way. It's, it's got we, some sense we'd now. be writing letters. We'd be writing letters and shit. No. The only thing good about the 70s is the fucking yeah. music. Yeah. Me, me and Mark, and Mark would be pen pals. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't even know each other to be pen pals. Now, I like it. Do you, what do you guys think? Would you like to be in the 70s or you like today better? It's hard to say, man. It's really hard to say. Uh, I like the '80s better. I agree with that. Cool too, man. But I I think every decade actually sucked, uh, except for the music. Well, this decade's getting crazy bad with the music. But I'm just saying, I like the phones. I like the computers. I like texting. I like getting a hold. I can tell Mark. Yeah, whatever. (laughs) I gotta post shit in the group. I'm the promoter Jeez. here. These guys, these guys are busier than I am for some reason. But um, yeah, Damn. man. Do you, what do you think, Al? Would you like to live? Would you like it to be the '70s now, or or you like what we have now? Well, I wasn't a teenager in the '70s. I was really young, so I mean, I I do remember certain aspects of the '70s and stuff like that. But I mean, I really came of age in the '80s. That was like my decade where I became a teenager, and that's when I really got into music and stuff like that and technology was already advancing in the eighties. I mean, you already had like home video game systems and, and things like that. I mean, the only, the only difference really wasn't, there was no internet, but there really kind of was in a way. Cause I, <laughs> my cousin had a computer with the modem and in the eighties, you know, you had to put your phone on it. You couldn't be on it long though. You'd have a high phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> Weird but science. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I don't, dude, like Eric said, man, just, you know, the world evolves, dude. It's just, I, you know, I mean, do I wish like, like the whole AI thing that's taking hold now, that's kind of scaring me there. That is, you know, yeah, I hate you that know, shit. Dude, you don't, you, 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 I start pulling up pictures on, on like Facebook or whatever. I don't even know what the fuck's real anymore, bro. You know? I know. Yeah. That's the scary shit. I see all these pictures. I'm like, is this real or just fucking AI? Yeah. AI, AI I like is a little shit. gloss. I don't AI fucking is like a little it. glossier. You could tell the difference between a, a phone pic. I know, and but an if, you, if you if you if you casually glance at it and you you you're yeah, like, I know. first you're like, what? but when you really like look look, look you got to look at the hands actually to to really kind of tell. They'll put like extra fingers and shit. <laughs> you know, things like that. As far as living in the seventies, I mean, I mean, I lived in there, but I was a kid. But um, I don't know, man. It's just. Every decade had its advantage. I mean, I had its cool shit. You know what I mean? It's that's. Like, I would, it's I like, would like to like have the seventies. But, but listen, but listen. If we were in, a, let's say we were in the seventies right now, and we were all in a room together, um, and you're like, oh, how would we? Fe- how would? How would you feel living in the fifties? 
You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, everything just kind of jumps, bro. It's, it's, you know, but I mean, my decade was the eighties as far as becoming a teenager, getting into music. And I loved, I loved it, man. I loved discovering, like watching, you know, MTV and discovering a new band and or hearing something on the radio and, you know, when radio was a little more important back in the day, and it's not important anymore. But you know, there's no MTV anymore. Everything is everything's at your fingertips now. Everything's easy. <laughs> it know? is, yeah. So that, that's my take on it. I mean, I, would I rather live in the '70s than now? I, I don't know, dude. I can't answer that. <laughs> I really can't. I, I mean, I, I, I remember the I 70s think life, a little while. Life was a bit simpler then because you, a lot you know, and kinder. The whole political thing. Has always oh, yeah. been there. As I'm not gonna get political, but I'm just saying the whole landscape, like everything that's happening now, is just everything's in your face because of the internet. Everything I know, all this stuff has been happening forever. It's been happening it, all through time. You're just seeing man. it live now. You're just seeing it live now. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, this is that you were able to have an opinion without people trashing you. It, exactly. That's a big difference. And, and back then, and back then too, I think a little, I think ignorance was a little, you know, was bliss too. You know, you yeah. kind of, you know, unless you turn on the evening news or whatever all the time, or you had that on all the time, you know. I mean, it was just you lived your life, man. You didn't fucking worry about all this shit, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my take on it. I I agree with that. I just like the technology today. I like the computers. I like Facebook. Yeah, Facebook could be a little bit better. Technology is you know. ultimately technology. Well, uh, mark my words, though. I mean, we're not going to live to see it anyway. But uh, maybe this video will will it will live on. You know, technology will be the downfall of mankind. Though it will yeah. destroy us. Yeah, the Terminator yeah. called it, man. Not Terminator Two, even though I like Terminator Two. Fuck but Terminator Two. Know, Terminator Two is a bitch ass movie. <laughs> Fuck that movie. What about what about you, Andy? Would you rather live in the seventies or today? Well, I think I, I think I uh, mentioned this to you yesterday. I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to live in the '70s for about a week. So if y'all need to get a hold of me for real, you need to call me because I'm on a rotary phone. Yeah, I don't. I only have this phone. Collect. This is not call the 70s. Collect. But it's still a phone. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to watch. Um. So if I text you on your phone, you're not going to answer anything. I can't. I don't. I. I don't. Then how am I going to ask you to be on next I don't week's know what show? So, you but, know what that is. Me. but um, I'm gonna watch TV, just the three channels. So I'm not gonna stream anything. <laughs> Why? Wow. Um, I've, I've got I've got records, so so I can do that. But I'm not gonna listen to XM. I'm not gonna listen to CDs or cassettes. And I'm only gonna watch the ABC, CBS, NBC, NBC. And, and UHF, and PBS, <laughs> UHF, yeah. So I'm gonna try it for about a week now. Now there are a couple stipulations that I'm gonna to have to get on Facebook, and I'm gonna to have to pass um, pass information on my uh, on our Black Spinner show on Wednesday. That that's why it's only gonna be less than a week because I got to do a show well, on Wednesday. Well, next week's episode spoiler is like our eleven epic closers of an album. Ooh. Mike, yeah. Metal Mike is going to be on there, and it's going to be on a Tuesday, not a Thursday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna make it. I'll be back in the seventies until Wednesday. Yeah, that <laughs> sucks because that's a perfect show for you, dude. So I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna see how um it's gonna go. I might come back on Tuesday just so I could be on a show. <laughs> time warp, time warp time for a couple hours. Yeah, but yeah, dude, I'm gonna try it because I think that I think that we stress too much about everything that's around us. We have to be on the know of everything. I think if we take a step back and just look at things in a wider scale, things will be a lot better. So I'm going to give it a go starting tomorrow. My wife doesn't know this yet. That might be a problem. Oh, <laughs> oh God, you got to let her know. Uh, you can't make plans without your partner. Come on. Yeah, man. You gotta let You're going to have bell know. bottoms on too? No, gonna but she's going to have to put coal in the oven. Oh, <laughs> see, see, now you're not fully committing. Uh, are, are, are you going to have her make you a sandwich at the same time in the in a candlelight? Right. I'm just no, I'm going to have to go to, to another room because she won't give up her TV. I'll tell you that. So I'm going to have to be in a different you're, room. Yeah, I admire you, Andy, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, I probably won't last through half tomorrow anyway. Well, you can't last through Tuesday because that's a fucking great Andy episode there. But uh, Jerry, what do you think about? Would you want to be back in the seventies or live today? 
I don't know. It's, I I was a kid in the seventies, so I don't know. I mean, all I do know is we were we had, we had, we had to work harder back then. That's for sure. To like find out, you know, what movies are playing in the theater, shit like that. You know what I mean? We didn't have like the the luxuries we have today. Um, newspaper. But yeah, you had to look at you had to call the movie theaters for fucking yeah. movie times and shit like that. Um, hey, the eighties got movie phone. That was fucking it, pretty it, cool. It's just a hard thing to say <laughs> because in the seventies we lived in the seventies. If we lived in the seventies, we wouldn't know about today. So I, I don't well, know. It's kind of a weird. Just tell uh... me what movie you want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't find any of those John Wayne but, movies that that uh, Joseph Stop suggested because I'm not but, streaming. My, it was the best music though of all time. Seven. I I definitely be going to great concerts in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, like rush, a lot of Rush concerts, right, Al? A lot of everything. Black and Saturday, you all kiss fucking, and rush. Uh, hey, if we kiss, Floyd, we kiss. Floyd, yeah, fuck. yeah, yeah. And those tickets were like eleven or twelve bucks. I know. But, but remember, you were making a dollar an hour at that time. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So that was twelve hours of work to get it. Everything is relative, man. Yeah, everything is relative, man. Yeah, but still, if you go back in time with a pocket full of money. But oh, but yeah. I'm just saying, people like people look back. Oh, look, a concert ticket costs us. Yeah, but what were you making to pay? I like to go back. You gotta make sure. You gotta make sure. You, gotta sure you gotta make sure you find some old currency. Though. I like to go back <laughs> to go there back with the bank time. account I have now. <laughs> <laughs> go back yeah. there with modern day bills. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, is I would this? like to go invest in Google and be <laughs> know, like right? uh, bigger, fatter. It's different color, different stuff, different yeah. everything. I'll yeah, call it Markle <laughs> instead of Lugal. You know, <laughs> and I won't be in Motley Crue, Lou. What the fuck did you go to Motley Crue for? You could have went with the better band, Hot Todd Time Machine, idiot. Oh, <laughs> God. Why did you go to Motley Crue? But uh, fucking, let's get to something else, man. Uh, oh, I didn't say about uh, the uh, 70s. Oh, what do you think, Tra Travis? Well, I basically have a 1970s lifestyle mindset, man. I like to live my life like it's the 70s. And, you know, I'll give the 70s this. Not not a lot of people were oversensitive and offended by everything back then. But weed was illegal, so you pull out a joint, you're in big trouble if you're out. I got to show you <laughs> careful with that shit. I can smoke I'm, legally now. Uh, so the perfect thing for me is I wish I was born in 1965. Then I could be a kid in the 70s and then be a teenager in the 80s. That hey, 1970 is pretty good because I got into the Beatles and and, and Foreigner in 77. So. Honestly, I'd, honestly, I'd rather go back to the 90s. Oh. The what? Wait, what, the 90s? Oh. I'd rather be back in the 90s. I love the 90s. Oh. All right. Why not? I, was child, I was a child in the 90s. It sucked. I could the 90s is was horrible. <laughs> that band Nirvana came out. Uh, Come on, Mark. What was so bad about the 90s, like, for real? The 90s was, like, depressing. Everybody was in a that bad was. mood. It was. Everybody was oh. fucking pissed off. It what was like, they, all of a sudden, like, 1991 came. Oh, everybody God. was happy and having a party. And then 19, fucking 1991 came, and everybody's going, fuck this shit. Fuck the system. Fuck you. Fuck everything. I hate everybody. You all suck. You must have lived in a different place. I lived in Los place. Angeles, in the Los Angeles area at that time. Yeah, and no people wonder. were yeah, fucking Rodney King pissed shit going off. off. People, there was riots and shit. Yeah, yeah, they the Rodney King riots. Off. Maybe yeah. you should start a grunge band, Mark. Fuck. I don't, I don't know, man. I, had a, I don't know, man. I had a good time in the 90s, man. Me too. I lived so carefree. <laughs> but I, oh saw people, I saw people go from being happy and partying, well, smoking fucking, weed, to like going better, fucking, man. hey, everything sucks. Why are we here? We're part of the system. What the fuck is this hippie shit coming back in the 90s for? Oh, dude, I love the 90s. But it was more That's depressing. Hey, Green Day was kind of happy compared to Nirvana. Yeah, but they make, they're they're happy, but they make me sad. But they're <laughs> shitty music. Oh, but the movies of the nineties were so good. The TV ah, shows, the movies, yes, the movies, yeah. Uh, the TV shows, the music too. And the music. Well, there, there was, was a lot so of great much. music in the nineties, but I'm just saying, yeah. I no, saw people's I attitudes that. change overnight from happy go lucky, like fuck this shit. I've seen that happen during the past. Five six years. Well, yeah, I did know. too. But it it yeah. started in the nineties with that shit. You see, I don't see that. But all right, I mean, everybody's different. How old are you, yeah. Andy? 
Uh, I'm about to be 50. Okay. 1990. Oh, yeah. 1990. Nine, listen, I, I'm a little ahead of you on this one. Yeah. Nin, okay. 1990, I was either 19 or 20. Okay. So I was I was a teenager and not a teenager mm. in that same year. The okay. thing is, I saw people turn from like happy, having fun, to being total douchebags. It was it was a total sea change, dude. And then fucking kids wearing fucking oversized clothes. You couldn't tell if they're. Oh, I hate or that dead. shit. I hate yeah, the oversized clothes. It was clothes. like the fashion was fucking worse than that the eighties. Like that was the late nineties. That was like no, awesome. that was like 94, 95. In the mid nineties, that's Limp Biscuit bullshit. I don't like no, they were doing that before Limp Biscuit. I saw that because I had my best friend Scott Travato back then. His brother Mitch was a in a tagger group. He wore all these fucking, and then his girlfriends came over with fucking. I are I, I, I are you a girl? <laughs> I was like, Limp, damn, Limp, Limp Biscuit's nuts. All right, well, Limp, let's, <laughs> let's get to let, let's just go to what we need to do, Jerry. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let Travis introduce the show, the topics, before we start. Travis, remind us again what we're doing tonight. All right. This is your pick. So I was very happy when Mark said I could choose a topic. That was I actually, wonder. let me give you, Jerry told me that he wanted you to pick a topic. So that's Jerry's idea, not well, mine. Jerry, you drop for that, man. <laughs> and by the way, I'm completely sober tonight, no alcohol. I'm That's just, fucked uh, up. Dude. Same here. Same here. I, I ain't drink in a while. I, uh, I'm trying to like lose some weight. For, uh, uh, hard alcohol. But anywho, let's get to the topic at hand. Um, I am a huge Doors fan since I was a teenager. But I'll get to how I discovered the Doors after I let everybody else talk about how they got into the Doors. I just they changed my life. And I love them, and I, I figured it would do them do it justice to do an episode about the doors. So I would right. like everybody to go around and tell me how they got into the doors, and then I'll go last of how I got into the doors. And then we'll do our top 11 songs. So I'll kick things off with you, Mark. How did you get into the doors? Oh, uh, shit. Like I was talking about earlier, that double like Columbia House CD, it's like, uh, I just got into them. I knew who they were. I knew what they were. I liked them. I just, I needed something to like fill up my Columbia house, fucking fake name shit. So I took <laughs> Doors Greatest Hits and it counted as two selections. So I fucking gave the Doors two selections there because it was a double CD at that time. Like, and that's how I got into the Doors. And then I saw that fucking lie of a movie that I figured out was a lie later. The Doors movie with Val Kilmer. Kilmer. And that was, yeah, it's like, why did a great director just trash Jim Morrison like that? I just gotta say, that. I know, right? I, uh, it's because it made for a more entertaining movie, I guess. That's that, why it's just it's just fucked up. A great director like Oliver Stone fucking takes liberties with a real man's life. I know it's well. That's what happens, man. They want to make it an interesting story, so they add some controversy and stuff in there. It just it fucking sucks, you know. It, but that's unfortunately it, it happens a lot, you know. Yeah. I, uh, I, sadly, I know. sadly, there's a lot of people that misinterpreted uh, who Jim Morrison was because of that fucking movie. Although I do, the movie's entertaining. It's a great story, but it's not the true story. You yeah, know, fucking Ray Manzarek came out against it immediately. Oh yeah, I was happy that he did. Oh, he hated that, it, man. Yeah. yeah. We did end up getting a really good documentary called When we You're did, Strange. Yeah, people are, it was called People Are Strange, right? When You're Strange, and it was when narrated yeah. by, by Johnny Depp. Yeah, it was that was, that was great. That was great. I was just, it was great that they did that because it was kind of like a, it kind of rectified everything. Mm-hmm. Jerry, how did you get to the doors? I just want to say one word right now Tara Senko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Fuck Edmonton. I don't know to be honest. With you. I, I, don't I know. agree with you guys. Fuck Edmonton. There you I, go. I I, yeah. I don't know the exact moment I got into the Doors. It's just one of those bands that just became part of my you know my musical taste. Um, I've enjoyed. I I I'm kind of a deep diver in the Doors, but not a complete deep diver. I mean, I've got I don't know. I've got all their CDs and stuff. So um, you know, they're they're a very good band. But I, I like I said, I really couldn't tell you when. I mean. It was probably songs like Light My Fire, stuff like that, Break On Through, you know, stuff like that that I probably liked and wanted from there. 
that's all I really know. All right, right on. Uh, Andy? I did it to impress a girl in junior high. Because <laughs> hey, she liked the doors, so, so I started to watch the – I started to like the doors, and I started to listen to the doors, and and she – um ah, she's like, I don't like that band that much. And then, well, look at me still talking about them almost <laughs> – Almost thirty five years later, um, I think the Doors are a fantastic band. They were only together. Uh, we were talking about this on Black Spinner last night um, because we did a six pack of albums and and Al chose the Doors six um, six pack. Oh, and, are uh, you we, in Cheese Rush? That was on my that no. was on my list too. No, it was top yeah, six, and they were one of my top yeah. six. That's yeah. really good. And um, we were talking about that they're only together for just a few short years. And they accomplished so much stuff in that short time. So, you know, my my hat's off. My my hat is off to them. They're they're, they're one of my favorite sixties bands. Definitely American sixties bands. Um, like you were saying that 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 they're your favorite American band. I would say my favorite sixties band from America. But yeah, I like the Doors a lot. So this was fun. But it's so odd. I know that I keep on rambling, but it's so odd that I think that their hit songs are way better than their um, deep tracks. What? Or like, or like track, or or like album tracks. I think that the uh, songs that they release are so far superior. I don't agree with you. We'll oh, get well, that's, that's an interesting thought. Thank you, that's Andy. Interesting take, Eric. How did you get into the doors, my friend? Oh, man. I mean, so as a little kid, uh, I always knew about the doors. I knew Break On Through the Other Side. Um, I remember seeing like commercials on TV for like, it must have been some kind of compilation CD. Uh, like in first grade, I remember seeing these commercials and uh, it was like, uh, you know, for the doors compilation. I just remember seeing Jim Morrison. He just looks so fucking cool. And there's this whole mystique about him. And there's the fact that you see all these cops on stage. And like arresting him and stuff. And I heard a lot about Jim Morrison on like VH1. Uh, but I never got around to listening to him till like middle school. Like, like, you know, when I was, you know, going through my preteen years, like, you know, transitioning from a child to like a, you know, a teenager and everything. And uh, uh, that's why I really got into the doors. I was watching some kind of documentary about like uh, on VH1 about the drug, you know, the whole drug and hippie revolution. Not the hippies, but the, the drug revolution of well, the 60s. Fuck hippies, but keep going. Yeah, yeah, fuck hippies. But uh, and that's why I like the Doors. They're very anti hippie. But uh, anyway, um, they were talking about the whole Ed Sullivan show thing and how they didn't want them to say higher. And they showed <laughs> the whole clip of them doing "Light My Fire," and I thought, man, that scream that he does, like Jim Morrison's voice is badass. And uh, from there, I just went crazy with the Doors, and uh, they became my like all throughout middle school. Man, that was my number one favorite band. Uh, they're not my number one favorite band anymore. Um, you know, but they're still up there. They're probably my like second favorite band of the '60s after the Beatles. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, it's just like Jim Morrison was like my idol, man. Like, I I wanted to be Jim Morrison so fucking bad. And when I was in middle school, he was just the coolest motherfucker. Um, I loved the Doors. I loved their music. Uh, I got laid because I sang karaoke. I got laid by a college girl when I was like a uh, sophomore because I you sang must be Doors able to karaoke. Sing. Yeah, dude, I can I can sing uh door songs uh very well. And uh Matthew Kachuk. And uh fucking uh yeah, I love the doors, man. Great band. I'll get more into them as we go on, so I'll let everyone else speak. <laughs> hey if Jerry, if your team wins tonight, that's the Stanley Cup, right? No, I got one. Oh more no, more. they need to win oh, one, one more. more. Oh, okay. I thought there were three up. Oh my Sam god. Sam Bennett, baby. And before I get to Al, I gotta say one of the best rock all over you episodes. Was the Doors debut album? With Mr. Mark Allen Mr. Taylor. Mark Allen Taylor. Yeah, that was a fun episode. And man. I, 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 I I've said episode. if you guys do it, I need to be on every Doors episode. I've oh, said yeah, man. Well, hell yeah, I, hell yeah. I, I, I Thank you. I want to be on too. So. Thank you, Al. You're up, my friend. Um. Yeah, it was my older brother, man. Like he had all the albums on vinyl and stuff. And as a kid growing up, that was like one of the first rock bands like I really got exposed to i mean he was deep yeah. into like the doors zeppelin um cream so those are like the first like kind of rock bands i really got into but the doors 
it, it's funny, man. I used to like take my brother's albums and take him in my room, and I had a turntable as well. And uh, I used to put it on late at night, man, and just put headphones on, and and it, it, it was just such an aura about like just listening to 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 the doors like in the dark, you know, which is. I think it's like meant to be. That's why I got my room dark tonight. So to me, I think of Doors as like a nighttime band. They you, are. Know? you know, it, it's like, it's like, um, you know, you, you you think of like the Beach Boys as like going to the beach and stuff and all that. Yeah, like I I think of them as like a beach beach band kind of going to the beach like during the day. I think of the Doors as going to the beach at nighttime, being lit yeah. by the moonlight. You know, and just yep. sitting on a beach and like watching the waves and the moonlight hitting the the water. Oh, yeah. I think to me that Doors is like the perfect soundtrack, like to do that with, man. You know, so I thank my older brother Paul for for getting me into them, and uh, I've loved them ever since. You know, so as we go on, you know, like Eric said, as we go on, we'll I'll talk more about you know songs and things like that. So, who died with a Densmore or Man's Eric that died a few years ago? Uh, man's Eric. Man's man's Eric. Eric. Okay, I can't remember. I knew one of them died. I, I had a, a big regret. A big regret of mine is, uh, uh, you know, Riders on the Storm. Man's Eric and Krieger. They were, they played right in my hometown at a theater, like literally blocks my house. Oh. And I was gonna go to it, and I just didn't end up going to it. I was like, ah, you know, I'll catch it next time or something. Densmore's uh, still alive, dude. Huh? Is it Densmore still alive? Well, yeah, Man's Ben's, Eric's dead though. Ben's I mean, more man, still alive. Ben, I mean, there's only two, there's only two members alive. left, like the Beatles. And let's be honest here, like you know, nothing against Densmore and Krieger. I love them, but Jim Morrison and Raymond Eric are like the like those are like the two most important guys in the Doors. Like, let's be well, honest. I think uh, Densmore, I think, Densmore had a let's lot cut, to do with No, nah, let's cut the deck here. I mean, I'm, he's, <laughs> he's important too, but let's. Light my uh, fire was written by Densmore, man. Or Krieger, I know, but Krieger. still, like the yeah. it's that that that. Organ and uh, Jim's voice. Oh, dude, but that guitar. Fuck. Yeah, the yeah, guitar yeah. was amazing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're useless. I'm just I know, saying, though, I know. Uh, you're just you saying got... the two most important parts. Of yeah. the I, think, I think they were a unit, and and you're missing one of them. It's not good. They they were fucking amazing together. No, well, but this is kind of like the MVPs of the band well, is what. I, I, I want to say this. I'm going to I'm going to call you on that one, Mark. I think if uh, Jim Morrison lived and one of the other three died, I don't think they'd be missed as much. I think they true. would. I'm gonna. Uh, I would say though that the first hit the Doors had was "Light My Fire," and who wrote "Light My Fire"? Krieger. Robbie Krieger. There you go. I thought Man Eric wrote that song because it's no, heavily it's Krieger. No. Uh, okay. When Jim Morrison during the summer when they were when they were recording in their summer house jim morrison told the other guys on the weekend to write a couple of songs robbie krieger was the only one to write a song and it was light my fire uh and so yeah, and, he, and he played in out and he played in out bundy's band too <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so how I, thank you al for your how you got into the doors um yeah no problem story oh go, go, go ahead sorry no no i'm, I'm good man you know what, Travis? You're doing so well. Do you want to do the? the yeah, the... just keep going, man. We're let you take over. We're getting. We're we're or lazy. I, I, this, I, this I can take over. First. Whatever. How are you? If you're doing fine, you want to try doing it, man? Oh, I'm I'm having a great time doing this. I love being the host. Right <laughs> on, man. do it. How I? Well, how I got? We're not narcissistic here. here, man. I was like, I was like a teenager still, and I was already starting to get into rock music, thanks to my father. Um, Markov, baby. I, I remember I have, you know, I have curly, wavy hair, and it wasn't that long, but I remember I was getting ready for church one day, and my dad said, you know, if you gel your hair back and you slick it back, you'll look like Jim Morrison. And I'll be like, and I was like, oh, who's Jim Morrison? And then he looked at me shocked, and he pulled out Strange Days, and he said, play that. And I heard the title track, and I was like, this is definitely different than what I was listening to beforehand. And I just got consumed and he had waiting for the sun and he had the debut album. And I was just, I couldn't get enough. I was hooked right from the start. And to me, there are five bands from the sixties 
that were completely anti-establishment, that completely were not part of the hippie generation. Even though I do like music in that hippie kind of form. Right. But to me, the doors, the Velvet Underground, Ooh. the Stooges, Ugh. the Stooges, <laughs> the Stooges, the MC, the MC5. Stooges are Alice, great. And the Alice Cooper group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, Alice yeah. Cooper, baby. They all drove a stake into the heart of the hippie generation. And whether you like the Velvet Underground or not, they were definitely anti-hippie. They were talking about heroin use and the dark why they were doing drugs. The, yeah, the, the, dark, the, dark, the, the, the dark city underbelly of New York. Yeah, they were doing yeah. they, they were doing all those drugs also, but talking about the against it. Were the first band to kind of have darker side of rock and roll in their lyrics. I agree and with that. I became a fan right from the start. And to this day, a, a lot of people say maybe Van Halen's the greatest American band, which I can't argue with that. Aerosmith, Kiss, but I'm going with The Doors. The Doors, to me, are just so important to me as a fan of rock music. Mm -hmm. And I'll always think that they are the greatest American band of all time. And so yeah. with that said, I'm going to go ahead uh and have Mark go first with his number eleven, and then I right. go do oh, Mark and Jerry. Sit back and relax. So it'll, be, it'll be Mark and Jerry, then Andy, then Eric, then Al, and then me. All right, that's right. good. That's I'm gonna good. go. It's all over for the unknown soldier. It's so dark and like it's like they have like a fucking. It's like. Boom. Yeah, it's like, shot. Boom, you know the bullet hits the head it's like god damn this is like in the late 60s and they're fucking talking about yep. fucking death and mayhem yeah this is fucking amazing fucking song i've always loved this song I great fucking, song i can't comes on i i play i i re, most of these songs i repeat every fucking time i hear it i love it i love it too man jerry my first one's gonna come off this fucking brilliant album right here. Great Brilliant. album. Brilliant. Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me, tell me your, your name? name? Hello, Hello, I love you. I love Let me you. Jump in your game. What a fucking catchy tune that is, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, man. I've always loved that song. That might have been one of the first songs I've ever liked from them that I remember. Well, I think "Light My Fire" because that's pretty much what's you know the the intro song to every Doors fan probably. But man. Absolutely adore that song, man. I'm pretty much sticking to their hits too, Andy. But you know, I have a couple of deep tracks. But yeah, man, that's a great, great fucking tune. I love it. I think I have mostly deep tracks. And that song was used in the uh, Forrest was, Gump. It was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> with, uh, What's your favorite part? The keyboard or Jim's vocals? Everything. Of what song? Hello, he said hello. Oh, Jim's vocals. Oh, Jim's, are fucking Jim's awesome. vocals. I, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's got a trippy song that dun 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 dun. I mean, it's got that that, that bass a cool riff to it. Well, yeah, that, the thing that Ray's doing with the fucking bass on the keyboards and the fucking drum beat is fucking just amazing too. All right, question real quick: Did they have a studio bass player or was it just all Ray? That was an LA woman, I think. They had Elvis's bass player for the oh, okay. LA woman, gotcha. right? Oh, yes. Um. Great pick. Love, hello, I love you. Andy? Oh. Hold on, you keep going. No problem. Skip me for, for just skip me for right now. All right, then, Eric? All right, my number is 11. It's 11, right? Yeah, 11. Number yeah. 11, let me pull up my list here. I want, so these are really not, these aren't really in any particular order, except my number one's like my number one. Uh, and then this one I had to put first because it's used in a movie that I really love. And I want to do it before someone else mentioned this movie scene. Uh, I'm talking about the legendary from also from the Waiting for the Sun album, Five to One. Fucking uh, epic uh, song. Uh, fuck yeah. So fucking heavy. And I love, love the way they used it in the last Rambo movie, Last Blood, where like all those, the cartel are like in his little underground cave. And Rambo starts playing five to one, just start picking off these cartel assholes, sons of bitches. Fucking awesome, man. Like I, I already love that song enough, but when they that used great, it, that like, move was great, man. Yeah. That was so good. That's like 
if I had to rank all five Rambo movies, that one would be number three. Like, I fucking love, I love that movie. Yeah, the one he was like in Asia, so that was a fucking, the Rambo. That one was uh, the fourth one, which they called Rambo for our fucking I like reason. that one. That one's really good. I love it. The only one I, 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 like love, that I love all of them, like, except like, and I don't hate it, but like part three wasn't the greatest. <laughs> that was cheesy. That was yeah. like a canon movie, dude. <laughs> yeah, it, it has its moments, but it's not like it doesn't match up with the other four. No, but no, five, five to one though. Fucking, that is a great song. Very heavy for the Doors. Like if you're a heavy metal fan trying to get into the Doors, that's like a song I'd give someone. Yeah. If you're a metal fan trying to get into the Doors, it's heavy. I, absolutely. Yep. So that's I, my number eleven. I agree, and that and Jim Morrison was completely toasted. When he did the vocals for that song, yep, and you can hear it too, man. I love that about his voice. I love that. I love that song, Andy. Yeah, thanks for giving me that a little time. I was talking to my wife real quick. Um, okay. I am going to start off with um, a a closing song when uh, when the music's over. So I'm going to start my, my list yeah. with that's a dude. It, 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 you know, and you look at these door albums and look at the last song on these albums. I mean, epics. Dude, a lot yeah. of more epics, man. Epics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and killer, I mean, killer epics. Oof. All right. All right. Thank you. Al? You cannot petition the Lord with prayer. <laughs> the Soft Parade, man. I'm going with that one. I love Jim's sermon at the beginning of that, man. Yeah. Like it's just that's a great song. It, dude, I and there's something like Andy just touched on. There's something about the last tracks, most of the last tracks on all these Doors albums, man. It's just, you know, it's fucking amazing, man. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Andy too. Um, I think it was Andy that said that, or maybe Jerry said it. Um the singles that they released. You know, usually singles that bands release, you're kind of like, ah, you know, they never pick the best songs. I'm not saying they're the best song. There are great deep, deep tracks, too. But The Doors seem to be a band that picked great singles, man. Like, you know, yeah. I love all their singles that they released. And yeah. there's never one that, like, I ever get tired of, you know. And, uh, I mean, this wasn't a single, but right. um, this, this was just another epic track to end an album. And I, I remember listening to the Soft Parade a lot when I was a kid, I used to put that album on a lot. Dude. It's not my favorite Doors album, but there are like some great deep cuts on here that might show up later on my list. So, but the soft parade is going to be my first one, my number 11. So. Yeah. With that album, I just missed it the first time that I would hear it because I was still in high school. I think if I wonder, I wonder if I revisit the soft parade now, Yeah, I would think differently. We got I'm tell fine. all the people you got touch me. You got shaman's blues. Like, so many great Dude. songs. Yeah, you got, you got wild child on here. Like there's some great running blues. Like a guy. The, the ending songs to the soft parade is just a fucking epic. Yeah, yeah. Well, more on the title track later. I got some stuff to say about that song later yeah. on. Yeah, you uh, see, I do have it though. So yeah. I'll probably throw it on tonight. Well, Thanks, my Rick. number. Well, my number 11 also comes from the South Parade. And I think this is one of the hidden gems from that album. I'm going to go with Do It. Good, Good song. Good what a heavy, song. It's a heavy door song. And to me, it just has some foreboding nature in that song. And I, I love that tune to death. I love that album. It's a very polarizing album for Doors fans. But I think it's a masterpiece. And I love both the one with the orchestra, and I love the one where it's just the doors without the orchestra. You got the deluxe box set. It's cool. incredible. Yeah. So now we'll go to number 10, uh, Mark. Yeah, uh, come on. If you know me, I just like whiskey. Why wouldn't I pick a cover of the Alabama song? <laughs> Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Fucking love that song. It's like fucking they're singing about my favorite alcohol. And then I found out it was a, like a traditional, like old drinking song. And it's yep. fucking who wants to hear the other versions? <laughs> this is the best version ever. <laughs> this song fucking rules. So Alabama song is my number ten. Right on. That, that missed my cut. I love that song too. All right, number ten, Jerry. 
The men don't know, but the little girls understand. Cover, oh, Willie Dixon, God. backdoor man. Great yeah. yeah. Says it, kind of says it all, doesn't it, in the title? Yeah. You eat your chicken, eat your Dude, pulp. That's the only part I hate. That's the only part I hate. Yeah. That's the only part I, I love find. that part. <laughs> Fuck. That, that part backdoor is man. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the way you scream. I love the live yeah, version where he screams his yeah. and ass the, off, dude, dude. And the band is that's just going right off the freaking the rails, thing. dude. It's, it's like so just cool. everywhere. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Willie, Di Willie, Willie Dixon wrote a lot of fucking great tunes. He did, man. Yeah. Look at all the great seventies <laughs> and sixties like hard yeah. rock bands that like, like, covered his yeah. songs. Yeah, UFO. Yep. Yeah, that's, how, that's, 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 that's how fuck he was if it yeah. wasn't for that music that yeah. 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 yeah hey, we owe everything to the old blues guys man we a, that man. music even the beatles wouldn't be around with all without the old blues because they were inspired with all that blue shit same thing right. with the rolling stones man more on the door well, it, 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 it's it, it, it's sign of the, it's sign of the times why those people weren't back then uh noticed you know what i mean so uh, just the way it was back then um, that's, too. Yeah, that's a great that's a great that actually I, I wish i would have put that actually up a little a little higher but it's, you know all the other songs are still good but yeah number 10 backdoor man well more on that song yeah. later <laughs> andy ah oh, i didn't number these so i'm going through them i'm going oh my god these, these songs are so good i know i did your list one week it was it was fucking horrible to figure it out but go ahead oh my god you, you fucked it up so much mark I, I know you I didn't number them right, dude. It was hard oh, to read. Dude, dude, Give me dude. one to eleven, not like fucking six, four, oh. nine, four. It was like all over the place, dude. No, dude, you put you put my honorable mentions like in the top five. I was you like, did. <laughs> you did. You didn't give me a good list. Travis gave me a good list, though. I know. Yeah, all right. All right. Go ahead. My bad. Your bad. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go with people are strange as my number ten. People are strange when you're strange. I thought that was when I saw the Lost Boys. I thought that was the Doors, but fucking Echo and the Bunnymen. It sounds Man. very similar. But Echo and the Bunnymen is a Bunny great Man. band, by the way. But they yeah. they did a great version of that song. Never really got into them. I know the Killing Room. You don't know uh, uh, Bring on the Dancing Horses. Yeah, that's the band I need to do a deep dive. Oh, on. I you do, need I to do, do a do, deep dive at like, Echo and the Bunny like Man. The Killing, Man. the Killing Man is a great song. Dude, Echo and the Bunny Man rules, Travis. I'm sorry. They're, I, I think you will like them. Women are wicked. Women are wicked when, they're they're wicked. Are wicked when you're unwanted. Damn. <laughs> when you're down. Ugly line. That's awesome. But yeah, I'm gonna go with people are strange. And like I said, that song opened the Lost Boys. It like fucking set up and ended and movie. ended too. And ended and it the set end? up that fucking movie perfect. Yeah. And vampires don't glitter, Twilight fans. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they also don't play saxophones. Anyways, <laughs> I, I like that song. I, I still that believe. Movie. I love that cheesy ass scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jamie oh, Gertz, what a '80s hottie. God damn, Mark, let's stay on track here. All right, go ahead. Eric, Eric number 10. Who's next? You. Oh, I'm next? All right. <laughs> I am going to go with a song from, I think this is a Doors album I probably listened to the most hmm. besides the first album. Uh, just because that for the longest time, it was the only other Doors album I had besides the first one and the Grace Hits compilation. So I listened to it so much before I got the other ones. Uh, it's from the Soft Parade album, uh, which I think has a lot of great songs. I think that's next to the debut. That's probably one of their most greatest, like complete albums. Or like every really? like hit, everything's a, a solid song. Uh, and I'm going with the epic closer, the Soft Parade. Man, I love all the different moods in that song. It's like, it's like see, it's like a, a, a what the fuck they call it thing a quilt. There's all these different fabrics and patterns on it, but they blend together seamlessly. Um, oh, that can you find me? Like that whole soft part. There's like the dreamy, whimsical like yeah part where it sounds almost like circus music or something like that. And then the ending where it gets real heavy and like just ding 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 ding, and like just scream it. 
Jim scream his ass off. I just, I love that song. I think it's epic. Uh, the Doors really were great at ending their albums, which is epic songs, and that's one of them, man. I love Soft Parade. Just a great. It's like it's like Merciful Fate, where it's like it's so many different like. It's like they moves, took yeah. multiple songs and like a lot of moves. them together, but it blends yeah. so well. It's like a roller coaster ride. So yeah, Soft Parade. Excellent choice, my friend. Oh, oh. yeah. I'm going with a deep cut from L.A. Woman, uh, La America. Um, I love that good one. Song. Yeah. That to me, to me, that's like one of the first like doom songs, really, man. Like it's just so it's pretty evil sounding and creepy, and like if you're going out to the desert like at night, you know, and and you don't know what the fuck's going on, and just like hearing that, and then all of a sudden, like, I mean, I think Densmore shines on that track, man. With his with his guitar. <laughs> The kind of the marching like snare that he does on there, yeah, it's it's uh, I mean that's fucking heavy for its time, man. I think, and uh, I love Jim's voice on him. I love his lyrics. You know, that's yeah. the thing about Jim, man. He just paints like these pictures in your mind. Yeah, you know, yeah. As you listen to him, you can actually it's like a movie. You can kind of picture a movie, you know. And that's Dude. a sign of a great lyricist to me, man. He was a poet. He's one of the best. I'm so, so America, glad. man, that's my number 10. I'm great so song. glad you chose that song. It's one of my favorites from L.A. Woman also. It just missed the cut, but I love that song. America, America. Yeah. I love that tune. All right, and I got to say about Jim Morrison, uh, and I think Ian, Ian Wadley said this in the L.A. Woman review, that he'd be lying if he knew what Jim was talking about most of the time, but it's that voice, yeah, that sells it. That's and it's sexy, kind of, he said, he's got a he sexy said, fucking he voice. Said, he said, he said, Jim Morrison could be singing, and there's only one way to rock, and it would sound good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it took me the voice. It took me the longest time to figure out what like, the fuck Mister Mojo Rising was. It's like it's a name backwards. Rousers. Yeah, it's, it's an anagram. It's an anagram. It's I get like, it. It's like you know, I figured it out. But it's like sometimes I don't understand what Ian Gillen is singing about. But his voice, again, like Jim Morris. But my number ten is a total tour de force for Robbie Krieger's flamenco guitar playing from "Waiting uh, for the Sun," Spanish Caravan. Oh so, yeah, man, good song. I, Adore that song. I don't remember that one actually. You don't know okay. Take Me. Yeah, you know. It was on the Double Greatest Hits album too. Yeah. Take me. Like I said, I go deep, but not deep, deep. So, well, you need to go deep, 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 deep. It's it's a fantastic. <laughs> I'm going deep. Deep. I'm going comes deep. On right after un. <laughs> <laughs> it comes on right after the Unknown Soldier. It's just a perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about now. I do know the song, it, yes. Oh, remember? It was like a Bobby Spanish flamenco guitar. Bobby Krieger is one of the most underrated guitar players. Good. Fantastic. He's good. I agree with Love you. Yeah. All right. Right on back to Mark. Number nine. Number nine, not to test you, up, not to test you. Oh, just run with song. me. Run with me. It just... It's like sci-fi fucking sixties, fucking late sixties music. It's like it's a creepy song. It's a cre- I love it. it's a fucking like Halloween song. It's it like is, a, man. It's like it's Wingo it's Boingo, it's right, Jerry? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's the Wingo Boingo reference. Take a shot. All right, not to test your earth from waiting from the sun, man. Fucking that's a great that ah, that one's been all over people's list so far. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine, those great mine signed by mine signed by John Densmore right here. Oh yeah. shit! Dead, Holy fuck! I got to dead, meet. Dead, dead have you met? Have you met? Have you met the Pope, Al? Have you met the Pope? <laughs> you got, He's probably met and several popes. And, and you yeah. got those lyrics that are so dark. Dead. He was. Pro- he was probably in, in L.A. Paul. seeing John, John Paul II. <laughs> I'm just all right, man. Right on. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Uh, number nine, Jerry. Well, we have our first double. I agree with Eric 100%. The fucking Soft Parade, man. I love that fucking song, dude. And you mentioned it perfectly, man. There's a lot of lot of shit going on in that song, which is awesome. It's like, what, 10 or 12 minutes long? But it's yeah. all fucking... It just it just all works well together. You're like, it's a good, trippy fucking tune. I love it. I mean, you mentioned everything else about it, but that's my number nine? Nine, yeah. Soft Parade. Off oh, the yeah. Soft Parade. Soft Parade yeah, off the Soft not, Parade. It's not Revolution number nine. Yeah. 
Hey, I love I'll... Revolution Number Nine. Of course, me too. I do too. It's creepy. I love it. It's a weird ass song, but I love it. I like oh like my it's God. A, it's a cool song to listen to, like if you're walking around at nighttime. Okay. Like, it, it, I like it, it, enjoy. Like enjoy I that. Like to, oh. I like to mess with my employees sometimes and play that song on the loudspeaker. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> you know that that is torture, Travis. Like, I like that. I like that though. That is fucking great. Hey, hey Mark. He, Mark. He, he doesn't play. He should play, he should play some Taylor Swift next time. Hey Mark. He doesn't play fucking San Diego at least. I like it. I like Taylor shit, so it's all good. Andy, you're up. Ah. Uh... Number nine. Um, this is going to be off of LA Woman. I love LA Woman. That's one of my favorite some favorite albums by them. But I am gonna go with Been Down So Long. It seems Ooh. like up to me. Been that, down that, so that, goddamn so low. Dirty. That it it's seems so like a, that fucking rah, 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 rah. Robbie Krieger doing that fucking little guitar. Yeah, great pick, dude. dude. It's such a good song, dude. You can feel the murky, the dirtiness of it. And that was one thing about the Doors. They can jump to so many different genres of rock and sound, but still be so confident about it. You know, you can't see through them. They're just so good, and it's so real. So, yeah, dude, the Doors with, with, with that track off of um, LA Woman. And that's a great song. That whole album is perfect. That's my second favorite Doors album. Uh, me too. I gotta say this about the Soft Parade. Uh, to me, it's kind of like the Rolling Stones when they released their Satanic Majesty's Request. It was very unlike the Stones to release an album like that. Mm -hmm. And it was unlike the Doors to release an album like the Soft Parade. But then the very next album, you know, the Stones released Beggar's Banquet. And then the Doors released Morrison Hotel, where they go back to the basics. But my number nine... Uh, been mentioned plenty of times already the title track to the soft parade damn oh, wow. yeah. that's that's left, one, i feel two, left two. out that's like that, yeah. that, that, that song that song borderlines on four that, of song, us. that song borderlines on prog yeah so many sequences and you know the priest shouting in the beginning and then you get the soft part and then you get like the swing jazz kind of groove going and then when it cuts to that, we'll whip the horse's eyes and make them sleep and cry. There's something so satanic about it, but also very sexual. Yeah. Take slay a few animals at the crossroads. At least, is, you did, at least you uh, didn't say sexy. That's a trademark of the Rock All Over You podcast. No, well, I'll pay for it. Sexy. It's sexy. <laughs> oh, I just got that notification uh, from PayPal. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> it's just a his, lawyer, his lawyer, lawyers will be in touch. <laughs> there, there, there couldn't have been a better song to close out the soft parade than that epic tune. Love the title track. Mm. All right, we go. Who's next, oh, Travis? Shit. You're no, running oh, this shit. shit. Eric, I, we, I, Eric, did I, I totally skipped you. I am so sorry. Oh, good, man. All right, my number, I think it's nine. Oh, See, uh, it's, not, it's not that easy, is it, Travis? <laughs> Thank no, you. it's not. Thank hey, you. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm you. loving this. I'm loving it. Man. I like this. Yeah, awesome. It's not I, that I easy. I get shit on for forgetting people. Thank you, because Jerry's fucked up, and now you fucked up. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Eric and I need to do their number nines. My, All right. oh. My number nine. Uh, this is the first. The first and spoiler alert. This this there are gonna be a lot of songs from this album because let's be honest. I mean, this is a great album. Uh, it's the first one from the debut album by The Doors, and one of the deep cuts, one of the one of the two songs that say aren't as well known that probably don't usually end up on the compilations. That's "Take It As It Comes." I oh, love a good this one. Song, man. So yeah. good, it's like it, it's so good. If this was on any other Doors album, you'd probably hear it more. But because it's on such a like it's on such a fucking amazing album, album, yeah, chapter hit. That, yeah. that song that song is so good that the Ramones covered it and made it just yes. Take I, it I love, easy, baby. I love, Take I love that. It I love that. Yeah, I love that Ramones album too. They did all the '60s covers. That's a great, great covers album. But yeah, take it as it comes, man. Great fucking song. Time to live, time. Like the way he sings that, man. Oh, sexy. Fantastic. Oh. 
Hey, now you gotta pay yourself there, Eric. He said sexy. Yeah, yeah, sexy. Al? Sexy. All right, who's next? Al. Um well my number nine is uh it's a title track to the album that it's not even on that album. <laughs> it's it, it's on Morrison Hotel and it's uh waiting for the sun. Yeah. Um I love the 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 oh, psychedelic oh, beginning of you know Manzarek's organ, and then all of a sudden Robbie Freed comes into dun 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 dun. I mean, it just like gets so heavy, and Krieger like just he just rips on a guitar on that man. I just I love that song, man. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, I, there's always been like those those oddball songs, title track songs that aren't on that album. Yeah. I mean, on through the night by Def Leppard. Passes the holy. Yeah. Yes. You know, things like that. Man. But oh maybe maybe the door started it. <laughs> you know. Probably. All right. So that's my All number right. nine. Waiting for the sun from Morrison Hotel. Great track. <laughs> nice. Good and song. On to number eight. Mark. Go ahead, man. Thought parade. Wild child. I've always liked that song. I like in the eighties how they made a video for it. That was pretty cool with like old footage of the doors and some like Indians dancing. It was a fucking really cool video. And I love that fucking I just like wild child. I just like the way he he sounds so fucking wasted singing it. It's like he's like sounds like he's drinking whiskey and just fucking singing that song. It's like wild child. It's like not your mother's or your father's child. I love that fucking song. So wild child's my number eight. Right on. A lunatic reigns in the trees in the night. I love that song to death. Jerry, number eight. The alternate band jam song. The Doors ever did, man. Mm-hmm. Fucking Morrison Hotel. Dun 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 Keep your eyes on the road, your hands upon the wheel. I knew one of you guys that picked that song. I mean the I, I mean every band I was in, I was like four or five bands, and every band we used to just jam that song oh, yeah. and have a fucking hey, the great J- time. Jeff well, used to, band did a great version of it. It's that a fuck too. it's a great fucking song to jam and improvise with your solos and stuff, mm-hmm. man. Just it's a just a kick ass song. I love Jim's vocals on that too. It's fucking outstanding, man. Yeah, great and, fucking uh, tune. Who did the harmonica in that song? Trivia. Vince hey, Neil. Yeah, John, okay. John, John Sebastian from the Love and Spoon. Oh, oh, what was it? Interesting. Well, welcome he, back, he, Carter, he was a dude. Yeah, he was an Al Bundy fan that, too. So that song, that song, uh, "Summer in the City" by Loving Spoonful. That song, for whatever reason, scared the shit out of me as a kid. I was that song. Was it Die Hard Three? three? No, no, it wasn't Die Hard Three. It was, it's, ah, that song scared me. There's like a music video for it on uh, VH1 on VH1 that yeah. they used to have where it had like all these like. Like it had like New York City, like you know, and all this crime and shit going on. It, it was oh, that's so that's scary. why you hate New York City. No, that- no, I hate. There's a lot of reasons to hate New York City, Mark. <laughs> Fuck New York. Hey, right here, here. Hey, hey, ACDC feels you safe. Kiss in- my ass. ACDC you know, feels suck safe. These in- nuts. <laughs> ACDC. <laughs> ACDC feels safe in New York City, though. There New York. Go. Fuck New York City. <laughs> Oh. I just had to get that in. <laughs> Sorry, Roadhouse Travis. Blues. Go ahead. Where are we at? Roadhouse Blues, and I've said it's a great tune. Yeah. Andy, number eight. Yeah, my number eight is going to come off of this album, Waiting for the Sun. We've been talking a lot about this album tonight. Yes. But, dude, not not to touch the earth is my yes. number eight. Yes. I yes. love that track, dude. Dude, it's just a great song. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Great one. Eric, number eight. Oh, man, number eight. This is a song that I used to not like for the longest time. Like, even when I was at, like, the height of my Doors fandom, like, in middle school, where I was like, I loved everything. It's like one song where I was like, I don't like that song. There's something about it I don't like. But as time has gone on, it's really grown on me. It's a really cute little, like, uh, really cute little love song. Almost kind of Beatles-ish. Like, I can hear the Beatles, like, doing something like this. And it's from, again, Waiting for the Sun. And I'm talking about Love Street. I love that song, Love Street. It's, it's a, a song. You know, 
When you're, she I mean, like, lives on the it, when you're young and you kind of want to hear something more heavy or like you want to hear more badass stuff, like a little sappy kind of love song like that, usually doesn't do it for you. But as I've got, as I got older, like I was like, that's a cute like little song. It's something I can hear the Beatles doing. I, I really love that song. And it's great. <laughs> so yeah, Love Street Man. He paints like such a beautiful picture with that song. It's just real cute and whimsical, and uh, yeah, love love that song. I love well, Ray's art. Yeah, that, ball. Piano, dude. that piano is awesome in that song. It's beautiful. Ball it's ball. a Street beautiful Street. fucking song. Yeah, it's one great. of the best one two punches, man. Hello, I love you into Love Street. Just yes, yeah. great yeah. one two punch. Oh. So Do you see how much I love this band? <laughs> yeah. All right, Al, you're up. Uh, number eight. I got the same as Mark, man. Wild Child. Fucking, I, again, the Soft Parade, I listened to that a lot as a kid, man, with headphones on. And I, when that song came on, dun, 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 that riff, man, just, like, grabbed me, man. And, you know, again, Robbie Krieger, man, he's he's an underrated oh. dude, man, I think, man. I think I think without him, I mean, I know Manzara kind of dominates the sound a bit, but I mean, to me, to me, Krieger fills in, yeah. he weaves in and he weaves in and out of it, man. And sometimes he, he comes up with a riff, man. It just is the main part of the song. And that, that definitely is the main part is that riff, man. So yeah. Uh, Wild Child from uh Saw Parade. That's my number eight. Funny story. I, when I went to karaoke, I did Wild Child. And when I was done, people were just, Kind of confused. They're like, yeah, it's not what well. songs you could choose. You chose that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that's how you know you're a true Doors fan, man. Yeah, man, I love that song. So I much. did beautiful girls at karaoke, and fucking, I was going shit. He sang that. I thought it was a different line. I go, well, fuck. I thought I knew this song. <laughs> and, oh, I remember some asshat at the karaoke night. He play, he did time from Pink Floyd. Oh shit. Said, in the English way, that part he said the American way. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I tried to do Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody by myself. I hate those. Like, I hate those fucks like that, man. It's fucking yeah. karaoke. First Dude, I, 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 yeah. In the late nineties, <laughs> in, in, in the late nineties, I tried to do Bohemian Rhapsody by myself, and the bartender felt embarrassed because I was going, Galileo, Galileo, Galileo. Uh, Galileo. Uh, Galileo. Yeah, I was doing all that shit, and then a bartender came in and like sang harmony with me, and it fucking killed it. Yeah, <laughs> saying the saying the American way instead of the English way. That guy looked like a total college frat guy, and it just Douche. pissed me off. Like, back fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy's <laughs> ass. <laughs> anyway. He probably, he probably shoves anal beats up his ass. <laughs> he probably beats women. He probably... <laughs> <laughs> hey. I don't know why that was funny. Anal beats are fucking always funny. <laughs> I don't know where we don't be. promote that, folks. We don't promote that. You can always tell oh we have God, Erica. Hey, hey, you, you, you can always tell when we have Eric on the show, man. You know, oh, anal, anal beads are okay if you like yeah. anal beads. No disrespect. All right, no more, no more anal beads. No more anal beads. No more anal beads. We had anal beads and he beat women. All right, we number we right shoot down. We reached our anal beads quota. Hey, no, it's number, over. Number eight, <laughs> cool. number eight, number eight from uh, it will be actually be the lone appearance from Morrison Hotel on my list, even though I love that album. I'm gonna go with Peace Frog going into Blue Sunday. Yeah, uh, one of the heaviest door songs. I love. I got blood in the streets up to my ankles. Last Great song the name of the the, the, fingers. the way it segues into Blue Sunday is one of my favorite segues of all time. I met my love on a Blue Sunday. I love that yeah. song to death. It makes me cry when I hear it. Hell yeah. Uh, one of my Perfect favorite song. ballads of all time is Blue Sunday. But I had to put those two together because they both, it's kind of like a heartbreaker living it like is. Yeah, you gotta have both. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> And no. that's not about beating women. Yeah, it's not about beating women. Beating yeah, women is if, fucked if, up. If, if, if you beat women, you're a jackass. That was yeah. the Beatles' "Run for Your Life," but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's a great song, though. It is. <laughs> All right, number we're on number seven, correct? Yeah, yeah. eight. 
Wait, seven. No. I did my oh, seven. seven. I did my eight. Okay, okay. seven. Then. Number seven is Mr. Mark Alvin Taylor. I'm going to go for uh, Morrison Hotel, A Ship of Fools, man. I brought the lyrics up because I can't remember right now because I had a thing of whiskey. The human race was dying out. No one left to scream and shout. People walking on the moon. Smog will get you soon. Uh, that fucking opening line of that fucking Ship of Fools. This, you read this song, it's like, hey, this is like happening now. The fuck is going on? Jim Morrison was a fucking shaman. Fucking predicting the future, you're fucking Nostradamus. They're a fucking great uh -huh. song. I love Ship of Nostradamus. Fools. Nostradamus? What'd you say? No. I was, oh, I, I, because Nostradamus. Like I said Nostradamus. I, like, I did say Nostradamus because he's an idiot. Yeah, he I like that. <laughs> Nostradamus sucks. Like here's, what I think it, wait, here's what I think of Nostradamus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, I like that song, man. <laughs> I thought it was going to be loud. I, I farted. I, I, I like that album. That album it's good. Yeah. I like Nostradamus too, Travis. I'll take I'll take it over the Final Frontier any day. Oh, dude, that that sounds like a future review on Freeform. Nostradamus. <laughs> Nostradamus. I love that song. Uh, all right, Jerry, number seven. Probably the trippiest song ever written. I'm sure you know what it is just by saying that. Off the first album, the end, man. <laughs> yeah. What Great a luck. fucking what a ride. What a trip. Literally, what a trip, man. Uh everything about that song is cool. I mean, it's a long song. So creepy, dude. God, so it creepy. Is. Oh, I fucking and some people don't like that song. I, I don't like all of my oh, friends I love don't that like that song. song. I don't I understand it. why. I can think it's can cool. I just, just say my former co-host on Freeform tune out on this song right now on this episode? Fast forward, because you hate that song. Go ahead, Jerry. I don't think who that was. I don't think I know him. But uh Me? Oh yeah, I don't. Oh, that song. He I know Lee, but I never did show because of that song. But no, I, that's all. I mean, we all know that song very well. I mean, it's a fucking great tune. The lyrics are the fucking. It's slow, and it just it pulls you in with the lyrics and Jim's tone, the voice, and the music behind it, man. Oh, Such a great guitar. ambient, fucking great tune, man. Bang, yeah, man. Yeah, I hate that movie hard, Apocalypse dude. Now, but that scene with that. Yeah, song I never got amazing. into. I never liked that movie. It's it's a, it's an acid trip, dude. It's like. It's like people are just like fucking like hippie shit. I don't like it. I like but I one. like the ver I I like one line where Nate. Uh, I love napalm. The smell of napalm in the morning. I love when they play. This is the end. The end yeah. in there. That's pretty cool. That's about it. All right then. All right, Sorry. I'm done. Yeah, great fucking team. <laughs> Sorry, <Jerry. laughs> love that song. Is it my turn? No, it's Travis. Yeah. Travis, you're the leader, bitch. Come on. Oh, no. I, just <laughs> I just did yeah. mine. You just oh. did his. See, Daisy. See, it's Andy. not that easy, is it? Thank <laughs> you. Um, I am, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with the Unknown Soldier. Oh, uh, love it. Dude, I just, that track just, it takes you on this mind trip, man. He's awesome. And we were talking, I think Al had mentioned about, it's like, you're watching a movie when you're hearing a door song, but dude, that's a weird freaking movie that they're putting you through. It's <laughs> awesome, dude. It's like, oh, just it right you, you know what I love about that yeah, song? So the right? unknown soldier for me. It, it gets glossed over a little bit. Wait until the war is over, the unknown soldier, and then you silently hear a little sitar playing in the in the back. Hey, part. don't talk about sitar. I love sitars. Yeah, I yeah, you. you and with and without that you, little, bitch. That, Fuck that, that I love that goddamn song. That little tiny strum of the sitar for me, I don't mm -hmm. know, just makes the Unknown Soldier so cool. I love that song. If it's done oh. well, with and without you wasn't. But, yeah. I love with and without you. I love that song. Of course you do. Beautiful yeah. song. See, I love this guy. He's awesome. I like All this right. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, Eric. Number seven, man. Back in the early days of fucking YouTube, man. And I was like, when I was getting into the doors, man, middle school, early days of YouTube, I never seen a badass video with this particular door song. It was just all this footage of sexy, like 60s pinup girls and movie clips of sexy, like 60s actresses. And I'm talking about none other than 20th Century Fox, baby. Yeah. Mm. God Ooh. damn, that's a good song. It's so fucking sexy and just amazing. I love it. That's a song that gets all the girls going. I dig that fucking tune. Jim Morrison sings it in such a sexy way. 
the mm. music, like just everyone on that, everyone in that band's just firing on all cylinders on that song. It's just a perfect fucking song. 20th Century Fox, baby. You're like oh. losing money on this show because you're using your. Uh... I'm using my own shit. <laughs> you're using own, your own yeah, shit. Yeah, I need myself. That money goes back in my own pocket. That's, <laughs> the, most, that's the most baller <laughs> shit ever. I don't know why, but for some reason that song just reminded me of another great psychedelic rock song called "You're Gonna Miss Me" from the 13th Floor Elevators. I love that tune, but you know, with that, with standing 20th Century Fox is a fantastic song. Yeah, love that, love that song. Today. Al, number seven. Number seven, I'm going with a bit of a hit, but I mean, I love this song, man. It's a title track from L.A. Woman. It's L.A. Woman. Um, great song. I mean, great dude, song. man, you, you put that on when you're driving, man. It's like a great driving song. It is. You know, the engine revving in the beginning and then, you know, goes quiet and then you hear Manzarek's organ like just kind of coming in and just kind of builds up and builds up and then gets to like this driving groove, man, and just... You can just imagine yourself like driving through the desert, like on the way to LA or something, man. You know, again, you, you it paints a picture in your in your head, man. You know, as you're driving and stuff. So yeah, LA Woman, man, it's, that's a great one. You know, I mean, again, the Doors picked great singles, man. I think they were one of the bands that had their singles were all strong. I don't think they picked a bad one, really. I know? agree. So that's I my seven. Hell yeah, that's a great tune. Just missed my cut, but I love that song. Number seven is my first entry from Strange Days. And I'm going with the opening title track. Very psychedelic. Yeah. I love the echoey effect of Jim Morrison's vocals. Yeah. It just has puts you in a puts you in a trance, man. It's just a fantastic opener. And I believe that's about when Jim Morrison was was walking in LA and he was just weirded out by a lot of the people that were inhabiting it. And that's how he came up with that song, the title track, Strange Days. Another great, timeless song. And now we go to number six, Mr. Mark. I'm go going to LA Woman. And I remember when I first got this, I played this in the car and I'm like, the car sits by the window, <laughs> like the waves down on the beach. And fucking guitar that Krieger's doing. It's just a fucking cool, like, blues fucking slow, mellow stoner track. I've always loved this song. This is, like, one of my favorite songs off fucking L.A. Woman. Cars Hiss by the Window. Fucking love that song. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a great one, man. Great chill song. And another really good one from that that just missed my cut was uh, Texas Radio. Love well, that, that might song. come up later, Travis. Thank you. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. And Crawling King Snake. I love Crawling King If you Snake. didn't think that would come up for me, you don't know me very well. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> All righty then. Number six, Jerry. Oh, oh shit. Kitty. Again, I'm with Eric. 20th Century Fox, man. I absolutely fucking mm, love that. Yeah. Song. Is that a cover? No. Is that a cover? No. no. I'm not 100% no. sure. This but, uh, I yeah. think all the songs were written by them except uh, Backdoor Man. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure if that was a cover or not. I don't know. I think Alabama anyway, song's a cover too. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it I know they have I know they have covers. No, thought, it's not a, it's not a cover song. Only the Alabama song and Backdoor Man are covers. That's what I'm saying. It's an Alabama song too, yeah. Yeah, it's the Alabama song. Cover. The 20th Century Fox is an original, Jerry. Yeah. Hold on. What I just looked like? at the album. <laughs> It says it says songwriters Richard Donald Barnes, Jeffrey S. Carlissi, Donald N. Van Zant, and Larry Lynn Steele. I think you're on the wrong song there. Is it Doors? Okay, well, that's a great song. Then. Okay. 20th Century Fox. Because it says all words. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one. Never mind. Dude, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I bad. told you you're looking at the wrong one. <laughs> I'm looking at the fucking hard copy right here. <laughs> no, but anyway, no. In all in all seriousness, I did think it was a cover before I looked at this. So, uh, but anyway, you know, Eric is right, man. It's a fucking great tune, man. I love the fucking lyrics, man. Cool ass dude. Jim's voice again is amazing on it, and um, just an all out fucking great tune. Good pick, Eric. Hell you yeah, man. <laughs> We're more than just hockey people. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> love that song to death. Andy, number six. Number six, five, two, one, man. Yeah, five one that uh, uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, just so uh, menacing, dude. You just, I mean, I mean, we talk about how cool Jim was, but dude, the whole fucking band just, just, just had that look and that attitude. Fucking badass band. So five to one is my number six. Excellent choice. Eric, number six. Number six, man. Uh, Got to go with uh, the one song on this list from Strange Days. Uh, the great, great Love Me Two Times. Love that fucking song. You know, the first time I ever sang karaoke, it was Break On Through Your Side. And then I, like, literally, I, I didn't even have Love Me Two Times picked as my next song. I wasn't even going to do a next song. I just, like, everyone was so impressed by how well I nailed the whole Jim Morrison voice and everything would break on through. They immediately were like, no, you're staying on. They played love me two times. And I got laid that night because of the doors, man. So <laughs> fuck yeah. Love I me two that. times, man. Great song, man. Great. Thank song. you, Jim. Yeah. Thank man, you, Jim. I was, man, I wish I was you. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's, that's all I need that to say song, about that one. That's all I need to that, say. <laughs> that song was also penned by Robbie Krieger. Yep. Robbie Krieger, man, ran some hits. Robbie he, Krieger is amazing. But he's a freaking pimp. Anyways, he is, man. Al, yeah, man. Al, you're up next, my friend. Um, this was mentioned before uh, by Jerry, but I mean, it's got to make my list. It is the ultimate kind of bar band song, and it's Roadhouse Blues. Um, it's funny, man. I mean, you know, going to house parties in the '80s, like when I was in high school, you know, everybody would be playing like you know, uh, you know, Back in Black and fucking, you know, you know, certain certain songs and. And like you know, Beastie Boys things like that. But then you throw on like you know, Roadhouse Blues, and it's a sixties. Yeah. Well, it's a seventies song, but but you think of the Doors as like a sixties band, and I would get get the party going, man. It's such a party like song. It is, you know, it, you know, about you know, drinking and just having a good time, man. You know, basically, you know. So that that was always like thrown in a mix at like parties. I consider that a great party song. So you know, it's always a crowd pleaser throwing that one on. So Roadhouse Blues. Number six. Amazing. Uh. Number six. Sting. <laughs> Amazing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. Number six. Staying on the Strange Days album. The closing epic when the music's over. Ooh, yeah. Good one. Uh, another example of prog in the Doors discography. Uh, just It goes so many places. And it starts off with that sexy keyboard organ going on. Man, it, bah, bah, sounds, it's like an offbeat version of Soul Kitchen. I agree. It sounds very similar. It's it's fantastic and it's got such some evil lines like cancel my subscription to the resurrection. Yeah. Send my credentials to the house of detention. I got some friends inside. That is some dark shit right there. And it's just one of my all time favorite screams in rock and roll. And yeah. his dad he says, we want the world and we want it. And he goes and does some sort of yeah. otherworldly scream. And yeah. then he just, Persian night, babe. Jesus, save us. It's just so incredible. One of the greatest epic songs of all time. When the music's over. Number Now we crack the top five. That's awesome. Oh. My turn? Yes, yep. sir. Number five. Yeah, uh, come on, dude. Alvin Perimeter, there are no stars. Out here, we is stoned, immaculate. And guess what? I'm going to take a fucking hit. Fuck you and your legal weed. Yeah, really. Get fucked <laughs> off. There yeah, you fuck go. Off. Out here, Texas Radio in the big, big beat, man. When I fucking heard that, I was fucking really stoned. I know this fucking song rules. It's like fucking bluesy, fucking new wave-ish. Fucking they were so ahead of their time with their fucking music. It's like they were painting a picture. This could be a fucking movie too. I fucking love this song. It's one of my favorites. And like the last two songs have been from L.A. Woman. But that's probably the end of L.A. Woman here for me. Yeah, a great, great song. Another great one, Has Seen a House. Love that one. I love it. That song was another grower for me. That one I never really like. I ain't really care for it that much, and that like grew on me over time. So it is. It's so ahead of its time. I don't know if anybody's picked down so long. That's a fucking great song too. <laughs> oh my god, 
And I he cusses. Mark, I think you picked that one. No, I didn't pick down so long. I, I thought you did. No, uh, I did not pick it. Anywho. Who's next? Five, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> There's a killer on the road. His brain is squirming like a like toad. toad. If you fucking get riders on the yeah. ride. fucking riders on the storm, man. What another great fucking scene that is, man. Um, yeah. well, again, that's that's probably one of the first songs I heard too from them. Uh-huh. I know my sister had my sister had L.A. Woman, so that's probably another song that got me into them. But man, I, again, another fucking just a trippy tune, man. I just and I and I love that shit so. I'm down with trippy shit. So great fucking tune. Weird ass fucking lyrics, man. I'm yeah. sure they made sense. I'm sure they made sense to him, but man, fuck. <laughs> it's cool. But anyway, that's my number. Well, we on five. That's my number five. Riders on the Storm. Excellent choice. Andy, number great five. Song. The end. Oh, it's a fantastic track. <laughs> this is the end. Jack, my only friend. See him. <laughs> Walking from bedroom to bedroom. You know, and. Yeah. And the guitar just I going you, off and, to kill you. and walking, opens the door. Dude, it's just a, a spooky, spooky song. It is. It's yeah. it's terrifying, it. yeah. Um, the end. Uh, amazing. Yeah, it, it uh, is. I got to say my top five was very difficult to do. I remember the first time I heard it, I was all like, is this dude talking about what I think he's talking about? <laughs> Oedipus Rex. Greek uh, tragedy. Where he wants to kill the the father and fuck the mother. Uh, Number five, Eric. Number five, man. I gotta go with another song from the debut album. I gotta go with Soul Kitchen, man. Love that. Let me sleep all night in your soul kitchen. Love that song, man. Uh, just a great, great tune. Uh, I'll still never forget to my uh, when my friend Nick Mills uh, first moved moved into his first apartment, and uh, we're like kind of getting everything. We're kind of you know we're in our twenties, man. We're hanging up all these fucking mu- music posters, find out where to put the bong and shit. And uh, <laughs> and uh, we had he had a Jim Morrison poster that he just bought from this uh, drug store. And he's like, "Where should we put the uh, fucking Jim Morrison poster?" I'm like, "Put it in the fucking kitchen, man, because that's a soul kitchen." And it, yeah, it's a great song. It always brings back that memory. So yeah, man, Soul Kitchen, great fucking tune. Great song. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I love, love it to death. Cool I love, album, I love man. I love Fuck says part. it's time to go. I love that part where it gets quiet. Learn to forget, and then it just yeah. blasts right into the chorus again. It just hell yeah, man. <laughs> great song. Number five, Al. Five to one, baby. One to five. Mm, no yeah. one here gets out alive. Dude, when Jim sings that, man, it's just holy shit, it's just so menacing, dude. With the guitars and the everything, yeah. it's just the whole instrumentation of it. Uh just a, it's a killer song, man. I've always that's always been like one of my favorites. And to put it at number five, actually, I mean that's like now the top five is like holy shit, you know, it's just crazy man you know it's it is hard it's hard to pick you know 11 tunes i mean because i love so many songs we're doing are we doing honorables too after this or no yeah you could do honorables yeah all right because i had to do some honorables man. <laughs> i just like too many tunes man so but that's my number five man five to one appropriately five to one as my number five <laughs> man. Awesome. smart man <laughs> i didn't even i didn't even do that on purpose either <laughs> It, it just, just happens, happens man. spontaneously sometimes, man. <laughs> uh, so number five, uh, this before I get into what my pick is, my buddy who is no longer with us, a great guy, he told me Jim Morrison was a better poet than a vocalist, and I told him, "Listen to your lost little girl." Yeah, and that is my number five, a very underrated door song. Great song, strange days, yeah. right? Great song. Jim Morrison has a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Love that song to death. It's great, and it's my number five. His voice is so... I, I love mean, his voice. I dude, fucking love voice, that man's voice. He can, he can scream. He can croon. He can do everything. He can do it all, yes. man. You know? Oh, yeah. 
It's a I sexy kind of, voice. Oh, he's one of the best screamers, man, ever. Oh, yeah. In my opinion, he is. His screams are insane. Screaming, he was screaming before even before like fucking Ian Gillen, man. Yeah. 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 He was so he was so clean. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Put, really yourself, a clean put yourself back in that time when they were new, man. Yeah. I mean, how extreme like they yeah. must have been to people like hearing them for the first time. Yeah. They were an extreme band, dude. Yeah. You know? With Oregon and all I that. Think nobody, yeah. I don't think a lot of people like probably were been they it went over a lot of people's heads, probably, you know. It was I mean, what like, was the la- what was the last band that shocked you, you know, when you, uh, you heard, you know? It's like nothing, really that was like that, like yeah. caused a lot of controversy. Okay, you know, well, yeah, I mean, well, that, no, just that. like like when you hear it, you're like, wow, what the fuck is this, man? I mean, it's all been you know, done before. Yeah, though. it's all been done, man. And we I live in such it, a and we live I in such it, a desensitized world now. We're like, you know, nothing uh, really shocks us I, anymore. I may get some help for this because this guy is a polarizing figure when it comes to rock and metal fans but i think marilyn manson was like the last gosh okay yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 i'm not a fan i'm not a fan but i understand i've never been a fan I, of his music but yeah he made ghost a fucking, is it he polarizing made no, i don't say polarizing no. okay huge, cool thank you i'm a huge fan I, of everything that ghost has done has been done before man was, right thank you Abba. but they do it well and they do it fucking awesome they're like I metal, hard have, rock. I, have, I absolutely love Marilyn Manson, and I love the, the portrait of him in Amer- American Family and Mechanical Animals, and just fantastic. So, with that, with, without saying, uh, let's go to number five for uh, Andy. You're up next, my friend. Number Jerry, five, Jerry, Jerry. Did you go right, Jerry? You yeah, already... I did my five. Yeah, I go after more. I think so, yeah. I think I was last. I five to yeah, one. Yeah, he was last. Oh, you did number five. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. No. Number See, five, Travis, it is, I, it's pretty hard, isn't it, to keep track, right? Is, <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm trying the best I can. Well, number uh, four, four is the first hit on my list. And I can't ignore the greatness of Break On Through to the Other Side. To me, when it comes to proto-metal songs, I think Break On Through should be talked about. Because when he says... Oh yeah, he does that scream and then oh, hits yeah. that. Dun, 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 dun. But the we riff is awesome. Day to day, I mean, hour to hour. Dun, dun, that's a dun, that's a heavy dun, dun, passage dun, dun, for 1967. And I love break on through to the other side, and I can't hear that song if it's not going to say she gets high. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't want the censored version. I want yeah. she gets high. Yeah. Try to run, try to hide. There you go. One of the best album openers of all time. I agree, man. It's so great great good. Great song. Uh, incredible. Number three. Number three. Mark. I haven't done my number four. Number three. Four, dude. We're on four. I haven't done my We're number four, four yet. dude. We're on four. Four. Yeah, you you went first for number four, Travis. So everybody. Yeah, else you went first for number four, four. I was supposed to go first for number four. Yeah. In the way. But what you was your number five, Travis? Was your number five, Travis? Number five, yeah. My number five was my number five was your lost little girl. Yeah. Okay. So, and then you basically went he did four. his first. Yeah. So then I'm on number four. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going from fucking uh, Morrison Hotel. She's Maggie McGill. She lives on a hill. Her daddy got drunk. <laughs> I fucking damn love it, that. Damn song. it! Damn it! Love Maggie McGill. Fucking one of my favorite songs of all time. But then that's my number four, man. All right, Jerry. Nice. Yeah, people are people are fucking strange. You know, love that fucking song, dude. Again, that's probably one of the songs that you know got me into the door. I like. I wish I could remember when I started really getting into the doors, but uh, it's songs like that that really got me into them. I mean, that's you know another fucking great tune with great fucking trippy. Not as trippy as the last two I mentioned, but it's still kind of trippy in a way. Um, people are strange off strange days. Sorry, I'm getting pissed at this hockey game. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting pissed, pissed at this Dodger game right now, so go ahead. All right, Andy, number four. Roadhouse Blues, man. I love Ooh, that man. song. Dude, it's a rocker. Uh, he's, I mean, his vocals on that track is so great. The band's on fire on that track. Roadhouse Blues, man. Excellent. Eric? Uh, my number four, man, I'm going uh, to d- repeat what uh, Travis said a couple songs ago. Uh, Peace Frog leading into Blue Sunday, man. Fucking nice. love it. 
I'll never forget being on a cruise and uh, we went to see a stand up comedian and uh, he opened, like he walked out on the stage with that song. I was like, fuck yeah. He's playing like a real good deep cut by the door. So peace frog, man. I, I love it, man. Great song. Yeah, baby. Uh, Al, number four. I'm going to go on an obvious one here, but you just can't deny the greatness of it still. It's like my fire. Um, it, I mean, it's a huge hit for them. Probably the most probably well-known song ever. And But, you know, was, I was watching the um, the Ed Sullivan footage of them, you know, doing the song. And, uh, I mean, Jim just looked like so fucking cool in his leather pants and the jacket. Fuck yeah. And how he, he just nonchalantly, like, you know, doesn't change the lyric to higher, you know, just sings it. And I love I love when he, after he sings higher, you, you see Robbie Krieger, like, smirk. Yeah, like, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, lo- I love that, man. Like, because he just knew, like, that was it, man. Like, that was the first and last appearance on uh, Ed Sullivan they were going to do, you know. And, I love his you know, uh, response to it. It, it too. wasn't a very big shoe. There you go. <laughs> I, and and the- I, I love the response to it, too, because they talk about, like, what happened backstage. You're like, you're never going to play the Ed Sullivan show again. Jim was like, "We, dude, we just played the Ed we Sullivan We just played the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> like, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> and, um, you know, in the movie, you know, they embellish it. Like, you know, like, yeah. fucking... Val Kilmer like jumps to the camera. It's, Jim didn't do that. Jim just yeah. sang it. it all cool. cool. But then, but then like the screaming, like, you know, like, you know, imagine somebody, yeah. imagine somebody in 1967 seeing the Ed Sullivan show and seeing them on there again, like, dude, it must've been a mind fuck because I mean, they were like an, ex- that was an extreme, you know, him screaming, screaming. like that, yeah. just looking the way he did. I mean, to me, Jim was like the first real rock star front man. He of was. A band. He you was, know, he was I, mean, I know D uh David Lee Roth, man. He was, man. He was. But fucking I mean, yeah, that's was, that's a performance he, that got me into the doors, man. That was what made me go, like, all right, I need to check this band out. Yeah. I mean, he influenced so many like vocalists and and you know, people were like, you know, the darkness and like the look and all that, you know. And and um and I just love at the end of the song, like, you know, he just just kind of looks down and you know, he just looks so cool, you know, and yeah. And, uh, and I mean that whole I mean they cut that song down to like three minutes, you yeah. know. But um they got what they needed to say and, and on that performance, man. And and uh and I think it's awesome. I and I lo- I still love the song to this day, even though you know it's played been played a lot on the radio, it's it's still a great song. So that's my number four. Hell yeah. And I said my number four was break on through, so and going back to the rock star front, I mean I know Mick Jagger predates him, but to me, no. Mick Jagger didn't come. To me, Mick Jagger didn't come into his own until the late '60s. Start with the Mick Taylor era, with the whole for his persona. I think I think it took him a little time to become Mick Jagger. Whereas Morrison, straight out of the gate, man, he was just yeah. rock star personified, man. You know, Morrison, well, Morrison shits all over Jagger. Tim Morrison just gave no fuck. He was. <laughs> I, agree. I agree with that. I love the Rolling Stones, man. Number uh, number three, Mark. Okay, well, you guys have already talked to five about five to one, you know. Let's get together one more time. So I gotta get a little karaoke. In. It's like fucking rules. It's gotta be in everybody's list, and I'm happy it kind of was so far. <laughs> five to one, man. Number three. Number three, and uh, I'll just come back to Jerry in a little bit. No, uh, Jerry's probably taking a shit. No, I'm here. I'm watching the fucking rest of the game. Sorry, asshole. Uh, um. My number three is Break On Through by, uh, yeah, okay, Break On Through. Is my I, I'll buy the doors. <laughs> there we go. Is, I'm watching the Dodger game and the fucking whatever. Well, Dodgers is not as intense as hockey. You, you can see both at the same time. Yeah, Doesn't have to great. keep leaving. We're, we're, we're all we're all great at multitasking. I'm listening. Yeah, we are all trying to multitask. I'm listening. Get your face in there, dude. <laughs> and your t- angle your TV. I was going to get my TV face in there. Oh, no, no, asshole. <laughs> you want to get us a, you want to get us like a canceled asshole? <laughs> no nudity. Andy, number three. My number three is going to be um, the title track to LA Woman. Dude, that's a that okay. is a up and down of emotions in that song. It's just so amazing. It's and and it's just not Jim. It's the whole band changing at a drop of a hat. So it's just a great track. So 
So the title track to LA Woman. Excellent choice. Eric. Oh man. Sorry. My number <laughs> three, they put on my list. Uh my number three, uh, another one from the debut album. Uh really cool, moody fucking kind of song. Like as my co-host Edwin said, it's a song that like, you know, you listen to when you're walking home from a bar late at night and i'm talking about the crystal shit man oh yeah man. A great one beautiful song the way morrison sings it i mean if you don't think jim morrison's a great singer go listen to fucking crystal shit man the way he sings it the, his delivery on it so cool so sexy so moody man i love crystal ship i'm surprised it hasn't shown up on anyone's list yet amazing fucking song almost Beautiful. did almost it almost did for no, me. it's not on my list but that is a great song unconsciousness i love the way that starts off and that's a great song it. to smoke a huge bong rip to you too. Yeah. Great ba- great ballad, great yeah. doors ballad. Uh all right, Al number three. Um I'm going with Riders on the Storm, man, number three. That song just sets such a great mood and and uh and uh you know with the rain and stuff. I mean on a rainy day throw that song on it's just like perfect for for that for you know listening to as a rain is like hitting your window. You know, perfect yeah. atmosphere. You know, somebody scored. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go, baby. <laughs> All right, dude, you got to one more so game on. left. One more Riders game. Riders on the storm, man. That's my number three. Boy, Sal, I love that song. Uh, my top three. I usually have my list set in stone, stone, but this time I shuffled my top three because I don't know something just changed for me. What I want my number one song to be. So my number three, I'm going to match with Al and go with Riders on the Storm. Uh, to yeah. me, what a way to end a career. I'm sorry, those last two Doors albums, they don't count. They do not count. It, uh, the, to me, the true final Doors album is L.A. Woman, as it should be, and Riders on the Storm is a perfect way to end a career. And the way oh, yeah. Jim, Jim, Mor- Jim Morrison whispers Riders on the Storm at the end, it's like the, the chef's kiss. It's just Amazing, and I love the rain before awesome. the before the 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 uh, organ bass kicks in. Yeah, mm-hmm. what else, what else can I say about that song? It's, maybe, it's Black, maybe Black Sabbath got their idea from that <laughs> for the song Black Sabbath. <laughs> right on. All right, we are down to the top two. Number two, Mark. Wait, somebody already mentioned this. It's like one of the best songs. It's like froggy as fuck. It's as, like you already said, I think, Travis, uh, when the music's over, man. Oh, yeah. This song is just fucking amazing. I love epic songs. I'm a Rush fan. Come on. I love Dream Theater. I love epic songs like this. It's like, when the music's over, turn out the lights. Turn out the lights. Because music is your special friend. Dance on fire. God damn. I know everybody fucking has to fucking have this song on one of their top 11 fucking door song. It's like talks about how music makes you feel. Fucking great fucking you track. Know, I love it. I remember the stupid Christian propaganda video where they were calling the doors satanic and they used when the music's over as an example. I mean, it's like, don't they have anything better to do? They don't, man. They don't. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I love that song so much. Great. Jerry, number two. Break on through, man. You talk about how your know, writers ended it, but fucking break on through is where it all started, man. Yeah. Incredible tune. I mean, another another fun song to play on guitar for your guitars. Um, you know, we all know that song, so there's really not much more I can add to it. Great fucking song. It's actually a very easy song to learn on guitar. It is. The doors aren't very complicated. Their 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 mm-hmm. stuff is pretty easy. It's a great tune, iconic class. But the, but the the riffs are cool though. They're simple and cool. Yeah, doesn't have to. I hate this whole like idea that everything always has to be so complex and intricate. To be yeah, good. I agree. Yep. Give me fucking Robbie Krieger. I mean, uh, any look, day look, over look, fucking uh, uh, over Marty Friedman. I mean, look at Smoke on the Water. Uh, I mean, come on, look at Smoke on the Water. I mean, yeah. fucking. I could teach Mark that in two minutes, probably, and it's one of the most <laughs> iconic riffs ever. No, oh, I mean anybody does that, anybody that doesn't play guitar is what I'm saying. I mean, it's just such a fucking easy tune, you know. That yeah. Iron Man, that Iron Man are like the, yeah. the two songs that you know you get. 
start out with. You know what? One anyway. of my favorite riffs. To, one of my favorite riffs to play on the guitar is Mother Mary from UFO. Doctor I love, Doctor. I love, Mother Mary. Da, da, da. We need to do a UFO show if possible someday. I love UFO. Me too. But, uh, rules. Yeah, who's next? I'm next. Number two. All right. And, two. Andy, Andy, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Riders on the Storm. That is my number two. Another epic closer. Just fantastic. Just, you know, that was one of the earliest songs that I remember getting into them. Because that's a pretty famous, well, that's one of the more famous songs, but man, I love it. And still to this day, I love it even more now than, you know, back in the day. So, you know, Riders on the Storm. Perfect. All right, you Eric. Number... Love you, man. number two, man. Uh, one that's been mentioned a couple times already. It was the first door song I ever heard. And it's such a great fucking song. It's an iconic song. First door song I ever sang on karaoke. I, I adore it, man. And like you, Travis, I got here the original version where they say she get high. And I'm talking about break yeah. down through the other side, man. I love that fucking song. I love the bossa nova beat they start with. That's right. And it sounds like someone's knocking on the door. Try to run, try to hide. Like, oh, it's so good. I, I really don't need to describe it anymore. Everyone knows Break on the Other Side. I love the music understand. video for it. I love the music video for it, where it just shows yeah. Jim's face all dark. Yeah, and then they, uh, Danzig, Danzig copied that for Mother. Yep. Yeah, Another so yeah, great music I, video. I don't need to explain Break on Through the Other Side to people because uh, you, if you haven't heard it, just listen to it and you'll know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's another show I'd like to do. It's too bad Mark's not a fan of Danzig. Otherwise, I'd love to do a Danzig show. Yep. If you do a Danzig show, I could shit on him. That's fine. <laughs> All um, right. Al, number two. Uh, the, what you, what uh, Eric was just saying about Break On Through, um, I, that's why I think Densmore is such an underrated drummer. I think like he should be talked more as far as like great drummers, man. I mean, he bought that whole kind of jazz influence you know into the into them you know into into rock and stuff like that so but my number two is one of music's over like one of the greatest epics i mean that's another great closer like everybody said you know and and like mark said this, should, this song should be on any, everybody's list i agree with that man i mean this is definitely a top top 11 you know tour song so that's my number two it's my second favorite i love love that love that song so when the music's over, my number two. Nice. Oh, excellent. Number two. Uh, spoiler, the last two tracks are from the debut album. So, number two is Backdoor Man. Nice. I think that song is just sinister and sexual, and it just has a great riff to it in that organ. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It's, just, it's just getting right down to business. I'm the I'm your backdoor man, and I love at the end where he does the I eat more chicken than any man ever seen. I'm the <laughs> backdoor man, and then after he says backdoor man, he goes what? Wow! And then he gets right back into the to the chorus. I love that part, and I love that song. What a great Doors track! Great cover of the Willie Dixon song. And now we get to our numero uno. Hell yeah. Mark. My number uno is fucking the end. It's like one of the best songs of all time. It paints a picture in your head, and he's like saying he wants to fuck his mother. Mother, I want to let you. You know, it's like it's <laughs> but like live when, though, live man. Um, yeah, uh, live live versions of the song. Yeah, he he lets it loose, man. <laughs> it's like it's like dude, this guy is getting all his fucking emotions out in one song. You could feel. His pain and what he's going through. Oh God, this song is just so emotional. I love the end, and I'm sorry, Lee. Sorry, you hate this song. Yeah, it's okay. He likes Jody Grimes, so whatever. Yeah, Jody who? Airport Airport Convention. Okay, go ahead. I love the end. That's my number one track. All right, Jerry, number one. 
I mean, to me, this is my this is definitely probably definitely a top fifteen song. It's my favorite Doors song, "L.A. Woman." I mean, I absolutely fucking love that song, dude. Um, everything's cool about it. the fucking guitar is awesome in that tune. Um, I like Jim's vocals on it. I think it was the coolest part of the movie too. At the end, when uh, after he died off, they showed the band just jamming that song. You know, you know, it's just a. Uh, it's been my all-time, you know, fucking Doris song. So that, no doubt, my number one. L.A. Woman from L.A. Woman. Perfect. Andy, number one. My number one song is by the Doors. My favorite song by the Doors. <laughs> it's going to be Light My Fire. It, it better be by the Doors. That's what this is about. Yeah, sorry. Know, my, right? my, my mind was wandering there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Neil Young. Okay. No. Good. All right. But it's Light My Fire. It's my favorite song. Um, I love the I love the um, extended solos that they're doing, and the way that Ray transfers from the keyboard to a Krieger's guitar, and he just does a mind blowing solo. Yeah. solo. Yeah. it's awesome, dude. Yeah, Krieger's That's awesome. like the unsung yeah. hero of this band. Yeah, I he think is. so too. He is. And that is one of the best solos I've ever heard. It's awesome. So that's my number one. Nice. All right. Number one, Eric, I'm interested to hear what your number one is, brother. Oh, man. Number one, baby. It's uh, not like a song you maybe would think. It's a song that was on someone. Someone mentioned it on this list. I just think this song is fucking perfect. It's the, it's something I could hear the Beatles writing. And it's just like such a perfect little love song, but like upbeat. And I'm talking about Hello, I Love You. I love that song, man. My favorite door song. It's Hello. so, sim- it's so simple. Yeah, it's so simple, yeah. sweet, and to the point. I love the way Morrison sings it. I love like the the happy like you know keyboards in it. You know, just everything about it's so fucking good. I remember it's I had kind a, of like drive my car in a way. It is kind of. I remember I remember playing uh, this video game Saints Row when I was like in middle school, and uh, uh, I had like a feature on my Xbox where I could like. I could like rip CDs onto it and like for certain games, I could listen to my own music during the game. So I remember playing Saints Row, which is basically a Grand Theft Auto ripoff and just driving around, blowing up people, shooting people, driving my car around, like listening to Hello, I Love You nonstop by the doors. Uh, so it brings back those fun memories. Um, I just love it, man. It's a great song. Morrison wrote it. He saw an attractive uh, black woman uh, on the beach or something. And he was just like, you know, uh in in lust with her so it's just like it's a cool song man it's a great song makes you feel young again and it's happy and awesome i love it man it's a perfect song hell yeah man that's a great and i love the harp the harpsichord yeah i love the anime it's like, hello it's so cool jim morrison loved that brown sugar he did man <laughs> hell yeah Hell yeah, me too. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> Al, number one, brother. Uh, for me, it's got to be the end. I mean, to me, that's the ultimate Jim Morrison's poetic, just painting a whole murderous like picture. To me, like the doors, there's three words that I think describe the doors the best. It's, to me, the three words are freedom, sex, and death. To me, those three words are like perfect description of like the doors, man. And I mean, all these songs that we all picked descri- describes like those three words, man, to a T. So, I mean, yeah, the end, man, just the ultimate epic for me, man. Just, I, I remember being a kid listening to that headphones and just being like fucking creeped out, man. I would just be like kind of freaked out. You know what I mean? Like, it really like put made an impression on me. Didn't make me a murderer, but <laughs> <laughs> not that that's I'm cool. How we agreed though. on the number one song, man. I love it. Oh. Yeah, no, that, I, I, that to me that's the ultimate, ultimate right? tool song for me. To end the first album, I mean that album just just top to bottom, man. There's no yeah. nothing, nothing bad on that album at all. Not it's, it's, awesome it's, it's like the two right, songs that people talk about is the end and light my fire by the doors. So. You know that's the great. One of the best debut albums of all time. In but fact, it's funny, man. When you see a lot of debut right. lists, man, that album seems to get like kind of forgotten about a bit. Down. Yeah, it is. You know, to me, and, to me, it is the best debut album. There you go, man. I mean, everybody has like their perfect debuts. For me, Van Halen's first one's like 
my favorite probably debut. But the I tour, agree with like, you in that because I the rush one what wasn't you know what I don't know it could, it could change you know sometimes Boston sometimes the first King Crimson album uh but my number one we're going three for three here I'm going with the end nice yeah. wow. uh what I love about this song just the mystique of it all yeah and they weren't even finished recording the song when they played the whiskey when they were to reach Jim Morrison didn't show up for that night and they found him in his hotel room completely on acid, brought him back, and he wanted to do the end. And he wanted to do that in the first place. And that's where he brought out the Oedipus Rex part where he's talking about killing the father and effing the mother. And that's what got them kicked out of the whiskey. The, the owner called Jim a sick bastard. Uh, but that song is just so important to me growing up. And what I learned about that song was, you know, the instruments, they sound like Indian instruments. It's all electric instruments, but they make them sound like Indian instruments. Hmm. And when they recorded that song, the recording studio was pitch black. And the only light they had was a candle. And it was right next to Jim Morrison. It was it's cool, a man. fantastic song. It takes all sorts of different ways in the song so many different passages weird scenes mm -hmm. inside the gold mine ride the snake to the lake and when they're talking about the blue bus is calling us i'm wondering if that's a connection to the manson family because charles manson drove the blue bus that didn't happen yet though, i don't think did it i'm not it, sure it, it hadn't happened yet yeah the bianca murder in 58 I think. Maybe Jim was maybe Jim was foreshadowing something. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it just and then at the end, where he's saying, "Come on, baby, take a chance with us and meet me at the back of the blue bus," and then you hear Robbie Krieger's guitars clicking, click, 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 and then it transcends into Jim Morrison saying, "Fuck, fuck, fuck me, baby, fuck," and that's an uncensored version of the album. It's such a cool part of the song, and then it ends the way it starts. It's the best Doors song, according to me. What to me, one of the best closing tracks of any album in existence. The uh, end. I, I agree with you on that. That that is just such oh, a, a fucking great track. tune, man. It is. Mm. That might be on my yeah. list next week. You never know. <laughs> it may uh, be, yeah. Well, if, if 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 it's not too late, I'll I'll try to send you my schedule as soon as I can because I'd love to take part in that. Okay. And I've never done anything with Metal Mike, so that'd be kind of cool. Great dude, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Dude. Well, that was fun. I that love it. Awesome. Travis, you did awesome, dude. Yeah, good Thank job. You. That's right for Travis. Yeah, man, good man. job, Travis. Good job, dude. Hey, oh, he yeah, messed man. up just as much as me and Jerry have, so good Probably job. Less. Yes. Probably he less. Probably less. right yeah. in, man. He's <laughs> yeah. right in, yeah. I loved it because like I, yeah. I got to say, hey, look, Jerry did it. He messed up. Now you messed up. It's not as easy. There you go. Hey, we all we're all fucking up here. It's the BS and, sessions, man. We're just that's losing. right. That's and, right. And I want to bring up how cool my father was. He saw the Doors in concert. Wow. He 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 went to the infamous show where Jim Morrison dropped his pants. Florida, 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 right? Yeah. Oh, really? at, the, at the at the dinner key in Miami, mm. my dad, uh, my dad, my dad, my dad snuck into that concert. Now, mm. according to your dad, how like with Jim Morrison when he exposed himself, like just how big we talking? Just tell me. <laughs> I'm not sure. My dad was pretty stoned at that show. Fuck. He just he just knew that it got really chaotic, and he yeah. also saw he also saw Jimi Hendrix and the Mothers of Invention at the Miami Racetrack. Wow. 1969. That was pretty wow. cool. Nice. Cool All right. All right. Mark, so, take us out, dude. Oh, take us out for the rest of Oh, you're going to make out. me take us out? I'm just yeah, going to yeah, say yeah, something, man. Out. Jerry. I, I got to go to bed. All right. Give the, give the final goodbyes, man. Tip your shit, Eric. All right. Before my fucking internet shits out because I have fucking AT&T internet. Listen to the Rock and Roll Over You podcast, baby. Go subscribe to us. Uh, our most recent episode is the Scorpion's Animal Magnetism episode. 
Uh, either yeah, this this week we either are going to have a uh, Vinny Vincent episode or an Overkill episode. Um, leaning towards the Overkill episode because it's going to be way easier to edit, and I do not got a lot of free time this weekend. So listen to us, goddamn! Uh, go check out Eddie Camp Strategy. He just posted an awesome video reviewing uh, Dirty Mind by Prince with Mister Ian Wadley Wadzilla. So yeah, go check him out as well, man. I am signing out, guys. I gotta go. I'm going to bed. Later, Eric. Take care. Later. Later. Looking forward to that Vinny Vincent. Go Panthers. I love that album. Go Panthers. I love the Edmonton Vin- Oilers. All right, then oh, we yeah. go. I to love you. that Vinny Vincent album, by the way. All right. Then we go to you, Jaime. Promote your stuff, man. Yeah, jeez. Um, been pretty busy lately. Uh, we got an episode coming up for Black Spinner. Um music vidcast me and al um this wednesday's topic is going to be we're going to be ranking the tracks for van halen's in 1984 that's a good one so we're going to be doing that and uh we just put up another episode of three shots down about sam cook so check that out that's available on apple and the other streaming devices so yeah things are going pretty good all right, Al. Uh, what Andy said, and then uh, I'm going to be doing a new episode of my daughter, uh, Knowledge Nerds. I got to get. I love uh, those, dude. Those are fucking those awesome, are by the way. Yeah, dude. thank you, I man. Too. Yeah, I be, we yeah. procrastinated this last month, though. We haven't done any new ones, but <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna do one this weekend. So uh, was that was that her on the show last night? I saw this yes. little bit of the yeah, video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she uh she was a little got a little bit did a little guest appearance with me, and then. <laughs> Then she took off, <laughs> you know. So, uh, she gets awesome. a little shy in front of the camera, though. But once she opens up, man, it's, it's it gets cool, you know. So, I think we're just we're gonna it's gonna take a little while before we hit our stride, but I think our show will be cool. So, you know. I think it's awesome. I mean, yeah, yeah, so. thank you, thank you, man. It's such a really good, good. I like it too. Um, oh, me, and, so yeah, if you want to go on my YouTube channel, there's concert footage of the recent concert me and Eddie kind of strats you went to, uh. Pat Travers, Cactus, and uh, Fog Hat. That's up there. Uh, the Rolling Stones concert I went to is also up there. If you want to check that out, they were that was great. And then uh, that's really it, man. Cool. So thank you for having me on. All right, oh, it's great to have you on, man. Travis, great, great, great choice too, man. Love the tour. So I, thanks, I, brother. I'm, I'm glad you could be on, guys. I appreciate that a lot. I'm glad that you made it. Yeah, we're glad you made it. That little yeah, teaser. Too, man. Off, man. I, I, I need to. I was so pissed off that I had to work today, but I'm glad I got off early. All right. Cool. So tomorrow on the Freeform Rock podcast, we have uh, Tim Raznick doing the Whipper Will with us for Blackberry Smoke. So if you want to check out some great Southern Rock, a review on that album, check us out tomorrow. Great, great Southern Rock. Oh, I don't know, dude. Well, you they got to listen to the review. I'm not giving any spoilers. <laughs> You're not a Either Southern Rock. Rock guy, Jerry? No, I love Southern Rock. Oh, you love Southern Rock. Uh, okay. I okay. do that sometimes. I didn't have to throw Mark off. I could really like it or I could really hate it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's cool, man. Yeah, like Night Demon. I hate that band. But, uh... Well, I got I got nothing to promote, but I love posting music whenever I can. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life right now, but... Yeah, I try Ralph, to keep Ralph laughed it when life. I said you should post more in Freeform. That's funny. You left in my I, I, I just, uh, I got a lot of stuff going on right now, but music keeps me going. And I love posting like deep cuts and like maybe albums, bands you haven't heard of. And then I'll post like deep tracks from bands you probably have heard of. And right. I, I, that, that keeps me going. And I hope that I can keep other people going when they're going through some tough stuff. So, so oh, until nice. I get my YouTube channel started, that's what I'll be doing. Max, so, music so, heals, man. So next week we'll be on on a Tuesday with Metal Mike and uh, uh, somebody already said they'd be on with us. Uh, maybe Travis, Andy will probably uh, come back from the 1970s. Be on an episode. <laughs> we're we're yeah. gonna do our yeah. night or eleven uh, epic track yeah. uh, album closers. And Al, oh, you're cool. welcome to be on there too, man. I'll let you know. Are you gonna do it on Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Take Jerry. Any final thoughts, man? Blah blah blah, wubba wubba wubba. What was that old MTV? What was that old MTV saying? Blah blah blah, wubba wubba wubba. I don't know. I thought you were doing oh, Alex the license for a second. Nah, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I mean, the er, er, yeah, everything's been said already. Thank you guys for being on and making this. You show didn't promote three shots down, you. Andy did. Oh, he did. I did. Okay. 
Yeah. Just making sure that you didn't promote. Yeah, Mark, thanks for listening. Yeah, oh, really. Hey, I want to make sure your show got promoted. And he yells at me for leaving for a second to watch the game. Yeah, fuck <laughs> you. Oh, fuck you. All right, later, <laughs> guys. Take uh -oh. Go easy, Panthers. Man. Love I love you guys. the shorts, Mark. Them. I love the shorts yeah, that you do on the freeform page. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah, nobody liked the one today. Later. <laughs> <laughs>